Hey YouTube, how's it going? Uh, whoever's first in, if you tell me that the audio is actually work, audio, the audio is actually working, that would be great. <laughs> Two, two. It's not going up very loud. I can see the thing in the corner. Two. Hmm. No. Definitely not right. Hang on. Fifty percent. Two, two. Might be working. Ain't nobody here though. Listen. I just feel it should be up louder than that. Hello, somebody. Is the audio working? Yay! Cheers, Ben! How's it going? I've now just noticed there's a wee VU meter in the corner with a, like, six bars on it. It'd be HC Max. It's got six bars on it and it's basically on one and flashing on two. It doesn't, that doesn't look right. But there we go. Maybe play the guitar too loud. Is it officially eight o'clock yet? I was looking at the Mr. White Snake asked but he uh, had a problem with his um, bridge pickup, and I drew a wee circuit. But I didn't think about it properly, so the, the, the diagram that's in the thumbnail or the thing I put on YouTube earlier on is not right. It doesn't do anything. Um, I just hadn't really thought about it. And then I did another one and was like, oh no, there's more to this as well. Oh, it's easy. I just can't. I've got to be in the right mindset. Or you could look up the internet. There might be, maybe someone else has done it. Who's to know? Why am I? Oh, that middle distortion. <laughs> Loving this position too. I decided to put the pickup ring on. The, the pickup still just mounted hard into the body. I'm, I'm sure that's a good thing, probably. It just happened to be the right height, and it was like a temporary thing. I thought, oh, I'll just if I just screw it at the body, it means I don't need to commit to actually drilling extra holes for the pickup ring. 
but now I've done it. So now what I need to do is um, somehow try and make this a little bit darker, or maybe clean the DiMarzio, one of the two, so we get a, a more similar sound, a more similar look. They both sound fine together. Quite extreme. Five past eight, my phone. Man, they, I, I went on early, Mr. White State, just to make sure it works. I was just saying there, I'm, I'm kind of, I think I f fucked up your, um, <clears throat> that diagram again. I've never really done, I've never done it before. I just thought, ah, there's a way of doing it. I just haven't yet worked out what it is. So in the right mindset, I'll get it. Uh, okay, Chaos McCartney. How's it going? I was using your um, black wire earlier on again. Great. I need to get another power supply, I think. That cheap one I don't think is a proper power supply because or it's like, I was watching a thing with JHS Pedals the other night and he was talking about if it's they may if it's really cheap, it might say isolated power on it, but it isn't because I don't know if you can hear it, but oh, there's an awful lot of a noise when I've got the rat pedal on. Oh, that's not nothing. And also sometimes when I've got the tuner on. Like when you put the tuner on it, it mutes the sound. Uh, I mean, oh. Yeah, it's a, an ebony fingerboard. And I just noticed earlier on, it's like, there's so many features. I was thinking that's pure basic guitar. It kind of is, but I'm pretty sure those are glow-in-the-dark uh, markers on the top. I noticed that the these, the, the Mother of Pearl things must be real Mother of Pearl, because if you look at it, it looks like one of them doesn't light up. Like, if you look in the 24th fret, Oh, it's like there's a, there's a bright one and a dark one. When you rotate it, there's the bottom one. No. It's obviously got to be hitting off it right. You can see the bottom one, but you can't see the top one. But from other angles, there, it suddenly becomes just the top one. Oh. Yeah, give it a, give it a stab, Mr. White. There, there is a way of doing it. I just can't think. I can't remember exactly how to do it. Um, I'll do something clever. Uh, so, yeah, there's no... Thing me yet, so I don't need to tell you which number it is. It's number 18. Yeah. Cheers. Have my wee Bacardi. I was but why was I, I was I was driving to the shop earlier on. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have a Bacardi. Why have I never called it Bacardi before? That sounds quite quite exotic. And then I was because I was actually driving to the shop to get a bottle, that's why I was thinking about it. I was like, I hope I don't say Bacardi in the shop and I started worrying about it. I didn't. There was a new wee girl working in the shop as well. So I, so I was in the queue, kind of got up here. Don't say Bacardi, don't say I kind of got a bottle of Bucky. Just like, ah, no problem. But you don't actually have to call it Buckfast. Everyone knows what Bucky is. I bet you could ask for wine and still get it. Yeah, but I was thinking about it because I mean I'm sitting here running a a single coil and a humbucker, and to be honest, I don't even know what pots are in this. It was the pots that came with the. Uh, I think it must be from an Ibanez RG. Um, big pots. They're, they're practically they're basically there's only like one wire in here. Just like the, the lugs just touch each other, so I just soldered them together. Um, and no earths or anything like that because you don't need it because it's in a metal plate. Um. Well, I say now, but so that that's a single coil, and I, I don't know. I think I think these are five hundred k pots, which doesn't seem to affect the the bridge pickup sounds all right. This position, though. power level of this Dimarzo is ridiculous. It's totally miles away from the strings as well because it's mounted at the body, but I mean, it's like that away and it's still really loud. This must have been a nightmare pickup. I remember using, I bought two of these in a set and um, they were from somebody's a Gibson SG200 that had been upgraded in the 70s. I think it was his dad's guitar or something like that and he bought Gibson pickups for it and he's selling these off. Um, the other one, I think, is microphonic. It's in my... What's it? I took the one that I had that was in the West Tone Clipper and put it into the West Tone Raider, and then I put the other one of this this set, because I've got three of them, um, that came from somewhere else. Uh, 
And I don't remember it being quite as loud as this, or quite as... Uh, it's interesting. It sounds different from other guitars, so what else do I want other than one that, a guitar that doesn't sound like any other ones? Your finest 45 mine. I don't know, you might get LD. There, there's a there's a there's a there's always been an imposter to Buckfast throne. There's one that's actually made in Glasgow called El Dorado, hence LD, which used to be 17.5%. Bucky was only 15, but it was undrinkable, like totally like for someone who drinks Bucky all the time, I, or I can drink anything, it really was unbearably bad. Um that was about 15, that was about 20. Oh, fuck, it was about 25 years ago when I, I bought a half bottle one time to the studio and couldn't drink it. Um, basically, just didn't drink it and it sat in my room with you know that much out of it because everyone had taken a sip and gone, oh, fuck it out. Um, like Mo drank it eventually. But then during the COVID, uh, the shop ran out of Bucky, but they had LD instead. And it was like, oh, God. But it was only 15%. It wasn't that bad. It was, um, it was drinkable. It was actually kind of all right. Um, I don't know. I don't think they do it anymore. I think it was only because. The Bucky ran dry. Um, it was only for like a week or something like that because uh, Glasgow wouldn't do well without Bucky. Oh no, no, the, there would be riots. You know what I mean? That's what I said. If we ever did get, in, if we got independence at that last thing, um, and they decided to, all right, you're not getting Bucky anymore. I think you would probably have managed to get ten thousand people to walk down to Buckfast Abbey and steal it all in Devon. Yeah, something like that. Hmm. Oh. Is there anyone else bought any new guitars this week? Or anyone else got a new guitar? Also thinking about your switch there, Mr. White Snake. Um, if you got a on on an on off on switch, can you do it with an on off on switch? You can do it with an on off on switch, a three way, which I use quite a lot. You could have the switch in the middle, humbucker, push it forward, it makes it a single coil, push it back. In fact, I've done this before. Um, oh no, but then you couldn't have the Resistor in the circuit. Yes, you could. No, you couldn't. Yes, you could. No, you couldn't. Yes, you could. Sorry, I'll just keep going. Yes, you could. No, you couldn't. That's how I do these things. Uh, just bought a lefty Ibanez. Hey, Rasmus. Uh, MC300DS. I'm not sure what that is. Um, a musician series. Uh, so, musician series. That's... Um, I'm thinking of the artist series is the ABBA one. Is the musician series the one that my pal Ronnie just bought? It's kind of like a... How would you describe it? It's not a Strat. Kind of like an area Cardinal to have something that looks kind of like it. Not really. Uh, neck through. It's, it's all, it'll be amazing, clearly. When's it from? Is that an old one or a modern thing? I don't know. The, the name rings a bell, the Ibanez musician, but I don't know. The problem with these things is... Um, Ibanez have a lot of guitars. They didn't have that many in the line, really, in like the eighties and stuff. But the last ten years, I mean, there's just there's so many guitars, and there's so many that only last a year. I think they they, they very much build X amount. I don't know, a thousand, ten thousand, or a thousand of this model, and then maybe by the time it gets to, I don't know, the mid, you know, April or something like that, they'll know how many have sold, where they're going to do it. And if basically, if they don't manage to, if they sell a thousand, once they're gone, they, they, they make more and it stays in, and then it stays in the catalogue next year. Whereas if it gets to the end of the year and a thousand or 10,000, whatever the number is, hasn't sold, it, or by the time it gets to catalogue printy time, August or something like that, I'm just making this up, but it's probably right. 79, wow. That'll be amazing. Um, I, I bet you it wasn't cheap. Um, I don't have any Ibanez from that era because they're well known and they're very expensive. Um, for a simple, they're all kind of competing with each other. So if you compare it to something like the Washburn Hawk, it's um, 
it's a very similar type thing, but th th these are much cheaper. This kind of thing. So you've got, I mean, not that it was influenced at all by the musician. Yeah, it was. Uh, that, and it's, it's obviously got the neck through. So this is what I call the coffee table era, because they look like really expensive coffee tables. It was it was the fashion. Um, but the, the, the problem is the coffee table era is an expensive era. So I couldn't have as many. I like the... I like 1981, two, three. That seems to be the magic number for me. So on a switch, I was originally phase. Yeah, I did that. Boo. The 500k push, pull in the drawer. It could work. You might lose the. The thing is, I have absolutely no issues whatsoever with the we red one. How well did I point at that there? Seems I couldn't even see it. Um, with that, and it must have one type of pot in it. But I don't know whether it's. A 500 or a 250, but it's really well balanced. Um, I don't really, what, what is it that's actually wrong? Yeah, originally the phase, fuck the phase, um, really. Um, well, I'd, I, I've put it in guitars, and I will put it in guitars if someone requests me to do it. Where phase does work is if, it's quite an easy mod to do. Say you've got a Les Paul with two humbuckers, and you can't, you don't want to break into them to add extra wires. And they don't have metal covers. Putting a phase switch in, or even just not even putting a switch in, just leaving it permanently out of phase, gives what I would consider a more single coily sound when you're in the middle position, when you've got both of them on if they're out of phase. Like the Peter Green thing, it's just a little bit more interesting. Whereas for me, on a, hum, a two humbucker guitar, having both humbuckers, I never really have both humbuckers on ever. It's either bridge or the neck. Um, the middle position is kind of, mm, that's why on the corker, it's got like a six position switch, which you could do anything with. And you can't actually have two humbuckers on on it because why would you have that? So I've got on that, I've got um, each humbucker on its own and then like the outer coils and then each single coil on its own and then the inner coils kind of thing. So that, that's my six sounds I chose. And then this, I'm, I'm really pleased with the switch in this though. Um, if you've got, an, well, you can do it. Obviously you've got an HH, just, well, this type of one, if you've got a, to, um, I don't know, do, do you get a Telecaster? You do. You get a Telecaster that's got a humbucker in the neck, but it's still got like a blade switch. It doesn't have to be the the Les Poly type thing. I was, I was, see, I was just about to mention that, thinking, oh, that's, that, that's got a humbucker and a single coil, but it might have different value pots on each one. I, I've never actually looked. They're still the original ones. So that might, could be like a, well, that would be a bridge. So that'd be like, that could be a 250 and that could be a 500. Not really sure. Um I was about to say, you're still going to have the switch. So you need to have the switch to do something. Well, you can make the switch into a Gilmore switch and then use the thing. So you, what you've got to do is you've got to make it. The problem with that, the second diagram I, I sent you, um, is you're running it, the other, uh, the two resistors beside each other, which is not what I want. Because I say you've got, well, we're starting with 500, right? So you've got, no, you want a 500. So what you've got, you've got a 250. So what you want to do is, in series with it, you want to put another 250, that makes it 500. Ah. But the thing is, if you've got, so 250 and 250, put them together in series, 500, because you just add the two of them together. But what I think I'm doing in that switch is putting them uh, parallel, side by side, which means that instead of 250, add 250, it's you half it, so it becomes a one two five, which is going to be even worse. It's annoying. <laughs> There's a way of doing it. I just can't think. I can't think off the top of my head how to do it easily. It's dead easy. I've overthought it. That's the problem. Um, well, no, a seventy nine Ibanez uh, musician. <laughs> Bet you it's amazing. Um, I, 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 get, I, get, I don't know. It's like one of those things, it's like buying the fancy stuff is really nice. It's lovely to look at. There is a certain pleasure to it, but they're not, it's not practical. I mean, because you've, you've obviously got, you've got the neck through one. I mean, I've, I've got a few like this, I'm not slagging you off. Um, but like for, if you were buying them new for maybe a quarter or a fifth of the price, you could buy the, the entry level one, which is 95% the same. The neck through is lovely. It's great to show people, but does that actually make a difference? I'm maybe. But as I know, I know what you mean. It's nice having the luxury. 
Um, maybe I like both. I don't know. I'm trying to think. I did. One of my. I, I did. The guy I bought my um, Squire. No, I didn't buy the Squire Bullet off him. What did I get off him? My, my Photo Flame Strat had. A th I think his was a musician. I can't remember. That it was amazing. It was one of those ones you'd never sell. And it was like everything, everything was overly ornate on it. It's one of them in it. It's like the bridge. It's not a normal looking bridge. It's got it's adjustable in ways that really you probably don't need, but it must make it better. But about uh, I and it's every bit of the hardware is kind of just over engineered, which is is good. Speaking of that, I've got this Yamaha to look at later on. Um, when you get that sort of the luxury thing. Um, you would a class glow in the dark fret markers was luxury possible. I'd, I'd class an ebony fingerboarders. I mean, and that, that that neck on this is I've, I've seen flame maple necks, but never one quite like this before. Um, and the thing is, it's like although this guitar I've kept it's intentionally kept very matte and plain and trump orange when you're playing it, it's super fancy because the bit you, the actual flame you see when you're playing the bit when you're playing the guitar, you actually see this bit. On the top of the headstock, so that's about I'm kind of what that's why I love that the corker so much because it's got that it's the the flame maple in the fingerboard which shows through the below the binding is at the angle you see it when you're playing. You know, maple has like a there's some angles where it looks good and some of them where it's like you can't really see it because it's so 3D. Um, it's almost like this has been designed, I don't know, maybe Dave did it that way so that when you're playing it, you see the best bit. I was annoyed with my Aria Thor sound. It's got some, it's got like a three piece neck on it, but it's, um, which is good. But the bottom piece of the neck is a most amazing uh, bird's eye maple, but it's, it's, it's this bit of it, this, this strip, not this strip. So you can't actually see it, but you could see it. But like, you know, if that, if that um, bird's eye bit was there instead of here, it would, the guitar would be worth more money because everyone would go, oh, look at that. Oh, the bit you're looking at, look at that. Uh, I have 250 vol and 500k tone in my HSS. Works for me. No resistors. Did that before. I don't know. I mean, I suppose if it's not working properly, it's not working properly. I wonder if you've wired it. And it's not. It can't be at a phase. You haven't wired the two coils out of phase. Ah, hey Papa Blue, just for your thumbs up during the week. That's always good. Helps the algorithm. Wish more people would do that. Um. Oh, what were we talking about there? Yeah, I don't think the 500k tone makes any difference because I never used tone pots. Really. They're there. I used it when I was like, when I had a single coil pickup in this. Um, I don't think it really matters. You kind of... What's right and what's wrong? No, I'm wondering, you've you, Mr. Wright, you said you'd made a, a... It wasn't just a coil split switch. It was a series parallel switch. Mm-hmm. Right. So... Are you sure it's the right way around? You're not. You've not put the two coils and the humbucker out of phase with each other, have you? It's worth checking, and color codes are different from their opposite between Demarzio and Seymour Duncan. So make sure you know which codes are what, because if you, I, uh, you know, if 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 it, if it flips over, if what if one's if one if they're both, if they're both going in the same direction, it'll be out of phase. They've both got to be opposite directions. Yeah, so start to finish, it's not start to finish, start to finish. It's not how you wire them when you look at the diagram. It's start to finish, finish to start. That probably sounded much more confusing than it actually is, but yeah, double check it. Mm. And then just ditch the, ditch the phase, sort of. But if that does work, uh, I'll, I'll, my three-way switch is great. I really like that. I prefer that. Do I have it in anything? It's in, oops, it's in the Casio MIDI guitar. I'm not taking a guitar off that wall again in case I plug the, ca unplug the camera. Um, I, so it's H HSH. When it's in the middle, it's HSH. When you push it forward, it's, no, you push it back, it's SSS. And when you push it forward, it's a Gilmore switch and it's SSS. So it locks on the neck pickup and then you can, and it's a split of the thing. 
yeah, Mr. White. It's like, I mean, I'd, it's, it's, it's one of those things that I don't know. I think maybe I'm a bit mental, but it's like the way thinking about it. Um, you kind of plan it all out. And that's the hard bit. You go, oh, no, no. Once you've drawn your diagram and worked out what you're doing, it's like, all right, now just a case of connecting it up. And then I don't follow the diagram that I just drew. Or I just, you kind of think, oh, I'll just put this wire on and oh, I've got to trim the end of it, da, 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 tin it, and then you just put it on. And then it's like, you just put it on the wrong place. Mental. Hey, Kenneth. The last two HS setups I messed with ended up just having this. Oh, I don't. The last two HS humbucker single setups. I ended up just having the the single coil on the tone control, trying to get a closer brightness balance. All oh, right, uh, you mean you intentionally put the tone control onto the single coil, but not the humbucker, so you could when you're in, when you've got both of them on, you can dial the tone down. Yeah, totally. Um, Hey, hey Strike Astrid. No, I've, I've got something to do on Monday and I'd rather not be hungover. I sort of think I'll just be hungover all day tomorrow. Actually, it was my pal and um, I was meant to go and pick up his guitar. But I was fucking wiring this thing. Just grew his arms and legs. So it's so difficult to do. It just takes all day and I've, I'm totally not happy with how straight I put the bridge on. It's really annoying. But um, my pal was like, up here. Are you still coming over tonight? And I was like, up here. Looking at it, going up here. Yeah, totally. I was going to come over before dinner. It's half past nine. Oh. I've not had dinner. So I was, like, I was happy. I'll kill you a bit tomorrow. He was like, happy. I've already had half, a half bottle of Bucky, so I will be a bit tomorrow. And then basically, I think he was asleep all day. <laughs> so I'm earlier on. So I'll just do that on Sunday. Sunday's a more respectable day to be doing that. Uh, it's need wiring chat. Yes. I think, Mr. Wright, I don't think it should be a problem with the, because those, if you think about the hot rail, it's kind of. <laughs> Cheers, Scott. Um, that would be pretty annoying if I'd been on for 25 minutes talking and no one had said, actually. But yeah. Um, what was I saying there? Oh, no. Just to be sarcastic, I lost what I was saying. Serves me right, really, doesn't it? I should just be nice to everyone. Sorry, Scott. <laughs> mm. Yeah, they were talking about. I don't know what I do like very much. That's annoying. I can't remember what it was I was going to say. Um, I think see the middle position on an HS guitar. If you've got a blade switch, like a three position blade, definitely the middle position. Well, the bridge, and then neck, and then. So what you want is this is this is in the middle position. This is bridge and humbucker. Which is if you had a three-way switch, that's what you'd have. You'd have single, single, you know, single coil, single coil and humbucker, humbucker. Whereas if I was, if, what you can do with a three, a normal three-way switch is, or a normal blade switch, is in the middle you get this one split with that. Which to me is... It's really got that telly strap, you know, telly in the middle strap positions two and four sound much more than maybe not much more. Let's be honest. Oh, strike you got to look inside, you got to look inside the guitar, see what's in it. That was the one I didn't take the bits. I had an Antoria in last week, week before, uh, and the girl had bought it new in. Or was it used? I think no. Was it, was it brand new? In like nineteen eighty one, some some ages ago, or maybe second hand, nineteen eighty one, and it was basically, but it was it was in new condition, and it was um, the pickups were Maxons. I'm totally sure, but nothing had ever been touched. It's like all the soldering was factory. Everything was factory. The thing, and basically, what was wrong with it was the pickup toggle was only working, only giving you the neck pickup. But it was like contact cleaner. <laughs> Works fine, um, but I didn't want to take it to bits and take the pickups out to look at them, just because I don't think they've ever been taken out. I, mean, I know I'm obviously not one of these people up here. Oh, you know the most the most valuable Telecaster or whatever is going to have untouched solder joints and all original, and it's just like that's not a playing guitar. But I get it if it's worth a hundred thousand pounds. So you're not going to be playing it. 
And you tar, I don't know, Mr. Weissing. I mean, I had a, a, a tarp thought the other day, but it was so disgusting, I couldn't possibly. They're just so, and the whole the whole tarp, I was trying to explain it to someone, and it's like, no, 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 you don't want to know. Whatever it is, the problem is, if any, anything that was actually ever written down would never be as dirty as what you could imagine. Um, but I can imagine quite a lot. <laughs> oh, wiring's easy, Ben. It's worth it's worth giving it a go. Just have a look at it. You can't break in by taking the back off and having a look. There's not that much in a guitar. I just I just learnt it from. Actually, it was from uh, It Might Get Loud. In fact, I saw there was another film that looked very similar to it. Um, it Might Get Loud's that film with um, Jimmy Page, The Edge, and Jack White. And Jack White made a. Uh, He's like, I'm going to make a guitar in 10 minutes. Yeah. So he had like a plank of wood, a bottle, a guitar string. Did he have a machine head? Or was it just a nail? He had a machine head and then a Telecaster pickup. And he just basically had the Telecaster pickup screwed to this piece of wood. And it was like a, you know, a one string slide guitar thing. Not really a guitar. Um, and it was just like pickup, output jack. And then he had it plugged into an amp. And it was like, that's all it is. Then I realised that basically, yeah, that's all you need. Um, that's basically what's in the shocking bird there. Oh, it's got a volume control in it. So basically, you've just got two wires coming off the pickup, and then the hot wire has a volume control in it, and then they both go to the pickup. That's it. It's like, right? So basically, to make a working guitar, what you need is a jack socket, or you could even just solder the, your cable. You know, your that. Just stick those two wires straight onto the pickup, and it works. And you've got a pickup at full bung and full tone. And it'll sound probably better than if you've got anything else in the circuit. Um, kind of mad. And then, then you just stick other things in it. But you've got the basic circuit. So you've got pick up, a wire coming from the top, a wire coming from the bottom. One goes to earth and one goes to the, the hot. And that's it. And it doesn't matter whether it's the other way around. It does matter if you've got two pickups. Because if one of them is backwards, they'll be out of phase. But that's it. You know, it's like... Mm. <sighs> Just in a strap button called a Les Paul Classic, I'm going to attempt to fix it with toothpicks, crazy glue, then piling the hole. Piloting the hole. No, fuck it. No, don't. Um, You don't need to. Just get a... Uh, I'm always picking these things up. Oh, that's not what ideally you want. I need to just a kebab screw. Like a kebab skewer. Take the, the screw out. Stick the kebab skewer in. Snap it off in the hole. Yeah, you know, give it a wee... A wee to get um, rid of the wee bits that are sticking out, and then just stick the screw back in again. Sorted. That's it. Because the kebab skewer, the kebab skewer will just go pfft, as you as you put it. You know, you just 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 drive the screw right down the middle of the kebab skewer, and it will split and just go and then fill in the gap. Sorted. And I would definitely not pay to get it fixed. No, you can also just get a bigger screw. Uh, yeah, Ben, try it, try it anyway. Just basically stick a stick in, and then screw the screw back in again. That's it. Um, done it plenty of times. I mean, obviously you can if you look it up how to do it. It's like oh, I'll get shavings and glue. And like, yeah. Not worth it. Um, I don't think anyway. I, mean, just, I suppose you look at it in the way that how I do it. Well, do I? How I do it on my own guitars, especially when I've actually got a choice, like something like this. I spec this out. Um. I believe I showed Jen. I was like, I asked her about asking everyone whether I should put a pickup ring on it. I sent it to Jen. Is that is that pure? Yeah, I think you should put black pickups in it. That pure? Oh yeah, I was like, fuck off with your black pickups. Everyone's got black pickups. Nobody's got a horrible cream set. You know what I mean? Fuck's sake. Some women just don't know when. This is where I find out whether she's watching or not. Doubt it's Saturday night. Don't use bamboo to fill the neck holes. Right? I've got to ask, Mr. Weiss. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a hell of a lot of tension and pressure and shit on the neck bolts, though, compared to what's on a, a strap. Um, you're not physically pulling it out. Mind you, on a Les Paul, on that one, you kind of are, which I always thought was a shite design. 
Um, everyone I know, when I first started playing the guitar, I remember my pal, I was that problem with his brand new Epiphone Les Paul, because it's really heavy, and because the Les Paul's kind of curved like that, the strap button's kind of there, so you're not, like, on, well, this one's on the back, right? So I'm pulling that like that, so you're pulling at 90 degrees to pulling it straight out, so it doesn't need to be, that doesn't need to be put on very well at all. Same with the one on the back. You know what I mean? You are put, the, the, the direction of pull is this way, whereas if this was a Les Paul, and it was up, and it was left handed. This is, this is gonna work. And it was left handed. You imagine you're playing your Les Paul. It's there, you know, with the neck here. It's actually kind of pulling it out, if you know what I mean, rather than being pulling it sideways. So, but that's how Les Pauls were made originally. So they've got they can't change that. Oh. So Justin Superglue. Yeah, that would do it. But this, this, these, these are things that it's like, yes. Sawdust and super glue would do the job totally, but I'm I'm I'm, I'm all about efficiency. Sawdust involves getting sawdust, poking it into the hole, putting super, buying super glue, putting it into the hole, waiting for it to dry, and then screw it up. Yeah, or kebab skewer in snap wee bit of a to get the wee bits that kind of go off the sides. Screw back in again. Next. So there you go. I think in efficiency terms. Okay, it doesn't take very long to do your thing, but because it takes like fifteen seconds to do the kebab skewer thing, it's it's you know multitudes faster. <laughs> but yeah, sawdust. I actually bought baking soda because that's what you're meant to use. Um, like, see if you cut the nut too deep, or you get a good. I mean, it, you don't do this on your prime custom made in America handmade guitar. You know, you put a proper. In fact, actually, I've got to, I've got to super glue the nut on this because it's actually. It's not actually attached. Um, so it was actually slipped down a little bit. Um, uh, tone kebab stick, yes. I can't remember. I got that down in Stratford upon Avon. And it's one of those. I can't remember what. What was it? I bought that had it on it. Was it a chickens or a chicken kebab thing? I don't know. I don't fucking keep it. <laughs> and it's still there. I mean, it's useful. It's also good for um, poking about inside things. Like, and Best method drilling plug. Fucking best method. Best method takes eight seconds. Um, it might technically be better, but I don't know. Give it a shot. The thing is, as well, it's like you do have a little bit. They don't tend to just go these things, so it tends to get a bit wobbly, and then it goes. You know, you, you never go. I didn't think there was anything wrong with that, and then it falls off. No. <sighs> A Shakespeare. Very clever. I, mean, I, I didn't know. No, I did, actually, because I'd been watching... Have you ever, anyone ever seen Upstart Crow? It's like David Mitchell, and it's Ben Elton, so it's basically Blackadder, apart from instead of Rowan Atkinson, it's David Mitchell, and instead of Blackadder, it's Shakespeare. It's really good. Um, but he's in Stratford-upon-Avon, and Jen's up here. This guitar shop's interested in buying shit. They want to drive me down. It's like... Okay, um, I was like, Stratford Upon Avon. Why do I know that? But every week in the show, he gets the bus or the, the, the carriage to Stratford Upon Avon and does a five minute monologue about complaining about how they're running inefficiently and they had to wait for a reserve driver and there was dung on the roads and all this crap. It's really good. Um, went into someone else, I got back to his credit, owned up and pointed out, which I appreciate. I wonder if there's some way of. You should hit them with a. I got it professionally. Find out how much the guitar shop would cost to fix it, and then say, "Yeah, I got that. I got that fixed in the guitar shop. It cost. No, they charged me forty dollars." And your pal, blah, blah, blah. and then when he goes to give you money, you just go, "Hi, I'm only joking. I fixed it with a kebab stick. I know a guy in Scotland." And then he'll be like, "Pure ah," and then he might give you a drink. Oh no, no, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't go all the way through. No, no, don't. You got to make it so that he thinks he's going to have to give you forty bucks, and then don't accept it. Because <laughs> that, so that's like a pure. Uh, oh well, fair enough. I did break it. Okay, it's a bit more than I thought. Oh, it's nothing at all. You were joking. Bye. They'll be happy. <laughs> only, 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 I only do cruel tricks on people when they'll be happy at the end of it, not leave them feeling. <laughs> 
I'm sorry, I would do that. Um, I suppose it's like a practical joke, but never let it hang too long. <laughs> That's the trick. And the concerns I had about the neck pickup not being in the right place turned out to be nothing. Um, it does. It sounds exactly. Well, I don't know. I wonder how similar. Uh, I'm assuming it's seventies. Uh, Demarzio super distortion sounds compared to. Uh, I'm assuming that the, the, the super distortion in that and the corker is exactly the same guitar. Uh, but I think I've, I've settled on a name for this. I think it's going to be called the Kraken. Um, because cracking is a bit, a little bit like cracking, so it's like it's cracking. You've got a cracking new guitar, you know what I mean? Or especially if it's in Scotland, where cracking you don't pronounce the G on the end of thing. Things I'm steaming. I'm going to the shop. You don't say I'm going. I'm going. So cracking is like pure. Oh, it's cracking. Plus also the. It's also a cool what, sea monster thing. So you get cracking and then the corker. He wanted to use up here, yeah. He wanted to call it the first, first just was it's a kind of it's a, it's like an incestuous relationship between a telecaster and a Les Paul. So we'd call it the incestocaster, and it's just I don't want a guitar called that. And then he went for bastard caster, which I thought was better because I don't like you know, having bastard in, in your guitar is fine, but having incest in it, it's like no. But uh, I, so it, it's the Kraken because that's what Jen calls him. The Kraken has a walk because he's one of these people that's right into technical details beyond what I can really deal with. And, but before, before but I know. <sighs> Seattle Kraken. Well, there you go. Yeah, I spelt it just K R A K E N. I think. Or did I? I can't remember. I did actually look it up, so I wasn't sure whether it was a C or a K. Seattle. Well, C. It's, it's a C monster, the Kraken, in it? It's the big, um, it's like Cthulhu. Is it not kind of like that? Is it not in Clash of the Titans, actually? Is it not the big monster that comes out of the water? Oh, was that Because that wasn't the Titan. When I was a kid, I always thought that was the Titan, but that's the Kraken. So I don't know who the Titans are. I found a Zap base. Must be at least 40 years old. Never heard of them. It's a short scale. I'll buy it off you. It sounds amazing. Zap being uh, Roger Troutman's band, more bounce to the ounce. He was uh, Jesse Ray's um, producer for his uh, first album. I've never heard of them either. But I wonder if it's getting to do with the, because it, Zap is because Zap doesn't normally have two P's in it, does it? Is Zappa a word? I know it's in Batman's, it's not just Z A P. Um But it's I, I, I like a short scale base. I nearly bought a short scale base last week, but the guy was a I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I, my offer wasn't enough. You know, I messaged him in was it last Sunday or something like that. Maybe this was two weeks ago. One of the wee um Ibanez Talman 30s. Fucking good bases. Um I quite fancied that to replace the wee the wee red base because the wee red base is uh, now worth too much money for me to take it camping and shit really or to download basically which is the only time I go camping these days come old um, um, but I figured it was a wee, a wee uh, and I'd, I was going to do my trick which I did on one of the j Pax guitars it was a in fact it was going to make you do that it's like it was a, a, a PJ pajama base you, know, it's got, you can't see it because of the colour, but it's a, you know, precision based pickup and a jazz base. The light's not on, that's what it is. Horrible yellow light bulb on. Ah, see? Yeah, so a PJ. And what I did was I put a, an extra socket on the front here, right? So when there's nothing plugged into that socket, it's just a PJ base. It works exactly the same, but... I used an amp socket on it so that, see, when you plug into the front, it like the way, see, when you plug your headphones into your stereo, it cuts out the sound from the speakers. That's because basically that's what, if you imagine the the actual socket has got like a terminal on it that's closed. When you stick a, a lead in, it 
sticks to one side and then disconnects the output. So this goes to the speaker sort of thing. You know, if you have this on your stereo and this is the your headphone so your headphone your headphones. When you stick it in, it goes in. It disconnects this one, but it connects to the amp. Now, so I did that, which means that um, I did it. Where did I do it? I did it after the volume control. So basically, when you've got another lead plugged in, the P bass and the tone control, the P bass pickup and the tone control still come out the main jack socket going to your amp. But the second socket has now got its own volume control and it's another output which you can stick into another amp. And I really like that. The idea of having you know having a, a Billy Sheehan basically, apart from you're doing it without having to modify the bass very much. Um, but that my plan with that would be it means that you could have like the bass amp on and then have it plugged into a wee distortion amp. I was talking about using a wee um, you know, using very small amps, so I could have a wee orange amp on the corner of my pocket playing the distortion and I've got a volume control for how much distortion you want but when you turn the distortion up it doesn't affect what's coming through the cube bass amp at all, the bass amp's still super clean, so you're not losing anything by turning the fuzz on, all you're doing is adding another sound with fuzz on it I really quite like that idea Quite a download, it's uh, June the start of June normally, uh, is it the first week in June you should come, Mr Whitesnake, I can get you in well, you have to still have to buy a ticket, but I can get you into the disabled camping because my pal Wayne had a, a heart operation and he's on insulin, so he needs a in the disabled camping. Come over, fuck it, it'd be hilarious, Mr. White State. Go on, come on, please. Get over. I'll, if you can get to anywhere near, I'll come and pick you up. I'm driving down anyway. Um Baby Metal are playing. That would that will change your life seeing Baby Metal live. My pal Peter, uh I, I talked to was he my pal at the time? I would say yes. First time I met Peter, he was he was used to he was Wayne's next door neighbour or a guy who lives across the road, Polish guy. And um he, the first time I went to download and camped, he was there and we're sitting there like that, and it was like pure hey, we all set up camp and I was up here, hey Michael, this is Peter, and I'm up here, hey, how's it going? Hey. And then about an hour later, we were, or half an hour later, we were best pals. Um and he I was up here, Saturday, baby Mel, Saturday, I gotta got go and he's like, I just fucking shite, but I can't, I, I'm, I'm really good at taking the piss out of his accent when he's when I've heard him recently. But um, and it was baby metal, and uh, Wayne had to go home for baby metal. She never got to see them. So like, we're going to bed. Was that? Like, yeah, fuck's sake, I'll come with you. you okay, no problem. And then we went into the crowd and had a two bottles of buck, uh, one and uh, three, a whole bottle of bucky, basically in a plastic bottle, and that was tanned in the build up to them coming on. And when they came on, we were kind of halfway. I was halfway between the barrier, the two barriers at the back and the. The mid mid barrier and the front barrier at the sound desk in the front, and uh, I was just lifted off my feet and put against the barrier, and he was stuck into the crowd, and then the gig was amazing. I get kicked in the head twenty times, and all the other crowd surfers. It was fucking mental. And then after it was like, yeah, there's no chance he's going to be here. So I went back to the tent, and he was sitting there like that. So he just opened a tin of beans and had it in the cove, and he was just like, fucking hell, man. So I'd be like, is it going to do that? Fucking hell, man. I'd be like. Did you did you stay for baby metal? Did you enjoy it? Like, fucking hell, man! Like, yeah, so right, how did you get on? Did you enjoy it? And like, fucking hell, man! Like, and then he's like, washing machine. And it was like the most violent thing he'd ever seen. <laughs> hey, Ian, how's it going? Oh. I've got a, 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 a bid for a Les Paul Studio 120 year anniversary. He's talk, he is thinking about it. Let me know tomorrow. Oh. What's it? I don't know. The studio. Um, when's their hundred and twentieth anniversary? It must be. Is that? Or is there not? Was it not two thousand and fourteen? That was the year that they changed the headstock to instead of saying Les Paul, it said Les Paul one hundred, and it had a wee picture, a wee hologram picture in the back of Les Paul himself. And they're they're worth less money than the year before and the year after because it says LP one hundred. It doesn't say Les Paul like Jimmy Page's does. It's like exactly the same fucking guitar. But the thing is, it's quite I, I found hilarious about that is you see the, the wee picture of Les Paul in the back. It's like a wee square thing, the size of a stamp, and it's just him going. <laughs> it's just like he obviously so he's, 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 he's must have had a choice of which photo to use, and he's gone go for that one, the one where I'm pure. <laughs> just like pure, ha ha, pure like a pure funny guy. I like Les Paul. Um, uh, it's 120 it says okay it's that year then so it's worth less money it was a less Paul have you played the neck on it 
because the one that I remember was a. Uh, they also came with robot tuners that year. Um, so that was a two thousand. But I was thinking, I thought it was a hundred. Therefore, it was two thousand fourteen. So thinking it'd be twenty thirty four. Not. Um, I but if it's got to be hologram or Les Paul, you see it, and it's just him going or whatever it is he's doing. It's a funny face anyway. He's obviously had a choice of 50 photos that were taken. He's chosen the ones where it looks funniest. Um, yes. Sounds good. Just, has it got the... Ian, does it have the a metal nut? Because the the, 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 le, the SG that I had a shot of a pal, I've kind of I've drifted away from now, but he, he gave me it because he didn't like the guitar so much. I was like... I, I had I, I took it and I was like, I just basically I, was like, I just want to give you this back. You can't give me a fucking like uh, an SG standard. You know what I mean? It's like these things are thousands of pounds. It's like, it's all fucking over. Get five hundred pounds. I can't take it, so I gave it back to him. Um, robot tuners were bin for Grovers. Yeah, the, the robot tuners aren't actually that bad. They're quite good, but it's just not on that guitar. It's one of those things that on a robot tuners on like a three hundred pound guitar. But those ones, the ones that work on a three hundred pound guitar, could be a great thing for your secondary guitar because it does all different tunings and all that. But not for like a thousand pound, not not for your main guitar. Um, I no, but the thing is, it's see the one that had a it had a wide neck, a, a metal neck thing, right? And it was almost like see if you imagine taking like just assume this is a normal neck, even though it's not really normal about it. It was like the strings were where they are. The neck was where it was, and then they put the binding on. So the neck was, the nut was the same, the strings were the same distance apart as they are on this, right? But imagine the neck just being, you know, six millimetres wider because the binding's on top of it. So what it meant was that the strings were really far away from the edge of the fretboard, like really bizarrely, you know what I mean? It's like, you're thinking, there's your fretboard, so the first string's going to be, you know, here. No, the first string's here. So you've almost, it, it, that's exaggerating, but it's a really strange thing. If you've not played it, it might pick you off. It really, it, it, kind of why I gave that SG back. If, if I really wanted it, I would have given him something for it. Um, it's just, ah, yeah, totally, I'm pretty much on it. But don't, don't bin. They're, they're, I'll put them on something. I like them. They're good. They're quite, it's quite, there's something about going. <laughs> but the, the ability to ch switch between tunings on the spot that must count for something. Um, <laughs> hey, Yoakum. And hey, Yoakum's girlfriend, you're very understanding. And just remember, see if you ever want to hold them to ransom. There's a blue guitar, an Ibanez, which I'll give you £200 cash for. That would really piss them off. So don't do that. <sighs> Has anyone played a Squire 40th Anniversary Strat? I think they are good. I think, was it the 30th or the 40th ones? So it'd be Squire. Squire was 1982. So it would be 40 years would be 2022? No. Yeah. So it's a 2022 one. I'm sure it's good. Yo, yo, JPAX. It's all right. We've talked about you, so I don't need to talk about you again. Um... Is that how you spell Stacia? How to put a C in it? Hey, Stacia! Paranoid fan, we know it. Mm. I want to approve. I wish I'd, I, I should know who Gort is. I'd, who's Gort? The robot. Who's Gort? I, I feel I should know, but I don't. It's not from one of the classics. Is it? But it's, like, it's one of those things, I don't know, because without, I mean, I, I haven't used, I need to start having a wee bit of a think about, um, God, is the 8-inch robot the day there? So, all right, okay. Uh, uh, Platu, Baratu, Nectu, that guy, okay. Yes, and I know the one you mean, the one that's on, uh, it's famous for being on the Ringo Starr album cover, or is it a single? There's definitely a Ringo album with him looking full-on 70s drunk in the spaceship ship with that thing on it. Uh, Forget to need a passport. Oh, fuck. Mr. White, you're right. The fucking bastards down south fucking voted us out. I think you need a... I think I don't think EU ID does it. I'm sorry. I think you need a passport. 
What a pisser. Hey! I always knew fucking Brexit was a pure terrible idea, you know, made up by the richest and most evil people in the world so that they could keep as much money and fund wars as possible. That's the reason, right? Everything else is whatever. That's why Brexit. But there you go. And it's now affected me. I don't get to see Mr. Whitesnake unless he's got a passport. Bastards. The original, you're right. I remember there was a... I never watched it. I do quite like Keanu Reeves now, though. I mean, I used to, it was very much a case of Keanu Reeves is a pure, terrible actor. He's not good. Uh, yeah, Mr. White, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And I, I do remember, actually, on another side, being slightly disappointing getting a passport so I could go to Amsterdam to see John Fogarty. I don't ever even get looked at because at the time we were in the EU and here my passport and the folk are just like that. Oh, it's just go over my fancy and a boat is easy. Yeah, totally. I'll come and get you. <laughs> um, can I get robot chairs? You're checking back or 6612. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh, if I feel your pain, man. I mean, a, a 12 string guitar is bad, right? A 12-string electric guitar is much worse than a 12-string acoustic, much harder to deal with, right? A cheap 12-string electric is just a torture machine. Um, I had to try and build a... Jen did an amazing painting of uh, Steve Vai on the back of a double neck one of your... Someone gave it to her free. Oh, I wonder why they did that. And I was like, so I was stringing it up and I, after she'd painted it. I, I hadn't played it before it was disassembled. Put it back together again. Ah, the guitar neck's kind of all right. A wee bit of a setup, that's fine. And then it got to the twelve string neck, and it was just all over the place. The nut was about that high, and, oh. and it was twelve strings. So whoever it was that had, had that guitar before had gone for, had spent ages trying to get the guitar neck to play, and then just given up on the twelve stringer completely. Um, it's a lot of was a sort of I basically tuning and. Having to buy strings is why I don't. I do actually have a 12 string acoustic, but it's not something I would think about. I've actually built a 12 string SG one time. I had this great idea, but I cut a groove like that in the bottom. This is before I saw that one that's got you know, the SG that was famous at the headstock there. So I cut a groove in like that and put a three aside set of uh, acoustic tuners, just cheap ones, on the back with the plug. So, so basically, it kind of the six fat strings tuned from there and the six thin strings tuned from here like what well, i'm sure there's a travel guitar that does that and it kind of sort of worked to the point of how well it can work when you've got a 12 stringer which is just a pure nightmare oh, an inch and 12 string sounds amazing i had one for three minutes in about 1985 yeah you know what i mean i mean the idea of it's great it's just that I don't have the opportunity i don't know if i've got too many guitars okay i don't have time i've got too many guitars so i don't have enough time to play them all and something like a 12 stringer, because the strings are all much thinner, it's the thin strings that go rusty, yeah? So most of the strings are thinner than your high E. They go rusty really quickly, and they're, at the time, 12 quid a set. And it becomes expensive, and it's like, strings don't tend to go rusty if you play the guitar all the time. You know, if it's a guitar that you're playing every week, they don't go stagnant. But if you miss it out for a month, put new strings in the guitar, leave it for a month, don't play it. They, they just rust. They've not been used. Oh. But the, the Dan Electro, that's, see, that's something that's kind of... I like Dan Electros, they're just too expensive. I know they're not expensive in the, the real terms of things, you know, compared to other guitars, but... I mean, that, that guy, uh, I had a few of that, the guy in the Bucky Rage band. And I really liked, I loved it. They had one that was a really crazy shape, and you, you couldn't even get to... I think it was the, the 10th fret you could get to. And it was like, you know, if you wanted to get to the, the 15th fret, you were up over the top of the body. It was fucking horrendous, but it was a great wee guitar. Everything on it, was, it looked like, see, if you'd locked me in Ikea. You know, shop's closed 9 o'clock at night. You're locked in. 9 o'clock in the morning, we're going to come in and you're going to have a fucking guitar. Here's a set of strings. It kind of looked like I'd basically been just walking about Ikea and made it myself using bits and hacksaws and shit. Um, great fun. Foxy did do a Dan Electro video. I haven't watched it yet. It's a big, I don't know. It's like, 
oh, why do you need a... It's one of those things, it's if you're oh, an electric 12-stringer. I mean, I had a, a Hondo Fame 760 Strat 12-stringer, which was, it was a it was a pretty decent guitar. The pickups back it didn't fucking work. There was no way, see, the pickups weren't wide enough for the strings, so you could either, you could move the scratch plate up and down a wee bit, but you could either get it so you heard the e, that E string or you heard the other E string. You couldn't get it to sit more. So what I did was I put hot rails in it because the hot rails got like a bar magnet, which is wider than the poles on a normal pickup. You put them in it, fucking great. So if you've got a Hondo 760 12, fix everything by just buying three hot rails, and putting them in it, and then you can split them down to make them single coils if you want to. I did. Um 12 string yeah I've got a 12 string Yamaha acoustic I bought from you as well. 40 years old. I mean so I'm gonna go and tell you how old mine is. Mine must be I bought it in sound control. No, did I buy it in an Academy of Sound? I can't remember. But it must be 20 years ago I bought it. Thing still looks brand new because it's been in its case nearly the whole time. It's got extra strings on it, so it might still play. It was amazing. It was just you need to have the situation to use it. Same with the robot tuners. If you're in a band that in the studio and you've got one or two songs that are on different tunings, it's kind of worth it to have the robot tuner so you can just switch tunings dead quickly without having to worry about it. That element I quite like. Same with if you've got like an electric 12-string. Electric 12-stringers up here. Yeah, I'm in a Beatles tribute band. Are you? So you need one. You need one for Hard Day's Night. Okay acceptable or you know it's but just to have it as a oh, thing was a wee bit shit oh. i buy all my guitars used can't see myself ever buying a brand new guitar yeah i mean well there's, there's obviously one of these you get this your super bargain ones you know you might find one super bargain so i don't know it's the last the last new guitar i bought i bought that yamaha 12 string new that was because i'd had a 12 string before and it's like there's a lot of tension. There's a lot of pull on a 12-stringer. So say you can, if you look at, you know, if you're buying a guitar for 100 quid, there's a fair chance it's going to be pretty good for a 6-string. But for a 12-string, it's there's an awful lot more pull and an awful lot more tension in it. They're always fucked. And if you get, because it's such an awkward bastard to play, make sure it's a good one. So I, I tried all the 12-stringers to get. It ends up with a Yamaha FG720S. 12 so it's got a solid top and it's got 12 strings it's basically the they don't my original yamaha guitar i got on my 18th birthday is a 411 and it was kind of replaced by the seven series it's got like a bit it's got binding on the neck i think or something like that and but that was the one i went for and it was great but yeah yamaha is what i went for speaking of yamaha i'll get to, I, don't, I don't i don't want to play that i'm enjoying playing this too much Oh, there's a new Yamaha there. It's just my pals. It's what he played for it is just sickening for the level of guitar you get. Might not be the prettiest guitar in the world. I've grown to like it though. But uh, just, you know what I mean? I've got an Epiphone for this Paul Day. <laughs> Any I've got, I've got, it's one of the ones that cost 1200 quid, really. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've got a Gibson Les Paul. How do you? <laughs> That's how it works. Oh. But a brand new guitar and sold it to buy an old one. I get it. Um, no, this is a brand new guitar. There you go. So I do. I've got a couple of brand new guitars. And I would argue, arguably the, the Corker's brand new as well, because although it was built and then sold to a shop from built to be for sale in the shop, and it took it was sat hung in a window for three years, still new, as in no one's ever owned it apart from well, I suppose the person who built it and then the retailer and then me. So that's brand new. So yeah, I've got two brand new guitars that are less than six months old. Well, I'm new from six months. Uh... And just for a case that fit it, I can carry a gig with it now. Mine is a slotted headstock, classic type machine heads. Oh, that your Yamaha one? Wow, it must be quite an old one. Slotted? Oh, it's got, it's got 12 slotted machine heads. I always fancied, the reason I've never done it is because I had that Hondo and I now appreciate that a 12-string electric. If you're recording, I used it a lot, but for just playing, yeah, nah, nothing nothing to do with me. Um, but I, I always did like the Rickenbacker headstock. In fact, actually, when I was in 
uh, Pennsylvania. I painted, no, I didn't paint. Jen painted a double neck Rickenbacker, which was a 12 stringer and a bass. 12 stringer bass. 12 stringer bass. 12 stringer and a bass. And it had the slotted headstock. So you could get like six tuners like on a Les Paul. And then the other three were slotted. I always thought it was a very clever thing. And it was me that I searched the internet and found on American Amazon tuners that I was pretty sure would fit. And I told them before I left. It's like, all right. They'd, and they, they bought them and I was like, oh, and I was like, yes, they fitted because it was a, I was fucking by the time that they, that they would have arrived. I was already back here. Like, up here. Oh, these tuners don't fit. Yeah, right, so, um, I <laughs> hilarious. Nineteen sixty nine or seventy Echo Ranger. There are Echo Ranger. The thing, the way Echo Ranger got round the problem with, uh, um, you know, there's a lot of pull on it. You know, it's a lot. You know, they just made them absolutely like tanks. I've got an Epi uh, an Echo Ranger body through there that someone sawed the neck off that I haven't thrown out. But the thing is, it's so solid. I mean, okay, you get. It's quite pretty. You get like pretty things, but with this guitar, it's like it's just the body, but it's fucking solid. You can totally stand on it, like in the middle, <laughs> no problem. Um, you can get a case for it. Just get an acoustic bass case with it, because I had. It can't be that. Maybe it's a bit longer. No, an acoustic bass case will fit it. Because did I keep the acoustic bass case for my twelve stringer? I can't remember. Uh, oh. Hey, hey, Jim. <laughs> I take it I shoot Jim. <laughs> Played a Rick 12 string today and guitar, guitar finish was horrible. Really? The fell in the shop called it Vibe. Four and a half thousand. It's, I, it's one of those things. Where do you... What is it you do... Do you know what I mean? If are you a touring musician who plays three hundred nights a week? Yeah, and the record company will buy you that guitar. Yeah, go for it. Go buy, get a Rickenbacker at four and a half thousand pound. But I mean, what if and, and you're playing Beatles songs on it? No, this is mental. No, I can't take it. I, I, I'm not. I I had a big moment for me was when I um I had I don't know maybe ten guitars or something like that. And I, I got a job. So I was like, I'm going to go into guitar, guitar. And I think I might buy, I might pay up Les Paul. Because they're obviously pure amazing. Everyone raves about them. I went into the shop and I tried three or four. I tried three Les Paul standard, two Les Paul standards and the Les Paul BFG, which at the time was £600 brand new, which is the one that's kind of... I think it, it kind of became a Gary Moore signature model because somebody took a video of Gary Moore playing one of them in a guitar shop when they came out. And it kind of became, after he died, it became a signature model, even though the only time he played it was in that shop. It was a kind of fucked up thing. And there wasn't, they were basically the both exactly the same guitar and it was £600, 2200 And at that point, I was like, oh, playing it up here, really? I couldn't spend 2200 and pay it up to get my dream guitar and just not just buy this 600 pound one okay it's matte finished but it's a p90 in the neck and i think it could um but yeah no and then it was really i was sitting there i was like oh, totally the bfg that's that's maybe the one for me and then it's like sitting there going like that pair. so is it as good as my washburn falcon no because i had the washburn falcon at that point no it's just it's nothing like as good as the standard is good no it's nothing like as good and it's like you paid like 300 quid for that guitar why are you spending two and a half grand on one that's not as good and it's like uh... but the thing was if it had been amazing i would maybe have bought it oh it's ridiculous oh 300 nights a week that's a proper touring band in the 70s that's what my car no we're curious to see it. I... Yeah, Jim, but I bet you it wasn't, what you said, four and a half grand. I bet you, I'm, I'm going for most, but I know you, you've got like quite an expensive strap, but I don't think they, they didn't, well, in terms of when they came out, or maybe about, not that, a quarter of that, you know what I mean? And it's like, so you're expecting a guitar that plays more than twice as good 
got to be twice as good as your strat. Not going to be. Hey, Ant Wales, how's it going? Oh. And the finish was terrible. He said it was vibe. Ah, I can't imagine. Um, go on, Wales. Tell us what you got, you bastard. I'm fucking. Someone, somebody bought a. Yeah, the wrecking back and the thing about wrecking back. It's, it's one of those things that I, th I think I don't. I remember I was in a band called uh, in Paisley for six months. The guy we used to rehearse in the guy's house. Lovely. I loved. I loved the guys. The band didn't like the music. He did a thing. He didn't do it for the first couple of weeks, but he started doing it after that. I, I think was, I've seen the the guitarist in Dire Straits, the Alchemy video, does it. When he plays the guitar. He was kind of doing this. It, 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 I'm not very good at it, but there's a, there's a there's a, a specific dance that he was kind of doing when playing the guitar. And the first time I saw it, I was like, "Jesus, really?" And then it became a thing. <laughs> What is that? Whenever but he only did it when we were pure rocking, when it was going well, I was playing the bass. I'd be, I'd be, once I got it going, he would start doing this thing where he was kind of, and it was like it just like, mm, but then I fell out with the drummer. So it didn't matter. But I mean, yeah, um, whatever the point was, that he had a wrecking backer. His dad retired or something, or won the pools or something. Like that. I'd be, I'm going to buy you, or I think it might have been for his thirtieth birthday. Like, going to buy you a guitar, Ugh, a good one. And at the time, he was playing an Ibanez artist. Which he'd had since he was like sixteen or that. It's just it had this and fucking that was it. So he bought a wrecking backer and it was the big, you know, the big Pac Man one that Pete Townsend plays. Uh, that one and it's like it was such a bizarre thing. You'd have to really, really want one to actually play it because if you look at like a normal guitar, like the gap there between the strings and the body is, you know, you can sort of get your finger under it, but on this, it's like if you imagine everything just being raised up an inch. So the pickups were, you know, here. And the bridge was here, and the neck was here, but you're playing a body this thick, so it was kind of almost like having an acoustic guitar. So, the, 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 imagine this is an acoustic, so you're, you're, you've got it against you, and the same distance of it, the neck would be at this height. So you had kind of like this really thin guitar, but you could literally fit your whole hand below the strings, and it was a really bizarre thing to get your hand. I mean, it was still there because it was kind of where an acoustic was, because... Or if you just moved, you know, you stuck a block in the back of this, so it sat there. It's kind of like that, but it's a really bizarre thing. You've got to, you've got to know, you've got to really, really want one. I think. Um, uh, stick to cheap shit since I play like shit after playing since 1972 at four years old. Well, there you go. And uh, um, that's hence hence the Harley Bentons. <laughs> got an encore vintage SG a few days ago. Cost me ninety pound. Good neck, easily as good as I need. Ten G's at Open G for slide stuff. I, for Open G slide stuff, you don't need a good guitar. Um, is it one of the ones with the guitar tech pickups in it? Um, a pig nose. The only pig nose I know is the wee battery power thing. But it, 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 I do like the, the the thing I like about it is the fact it's got a knob. It's only got one volume knob and it's shaped like a pig's nose. But it was a terrible, terrible, fucking awful wee amp. But that you're talking about something else because it's got valves in it. Um, <laughs> yes, I know exactly what you mean. Um, um, Maple Body was beautiful, but looked like someone half pissed around back. I saw a little bit of that. I know, I know exactly what you mean, which, like, honestly, Jim, if you were looking at a guitar that was 150 quid or 200 quid, you would go, ah, four and a half grand, man. You know what I mean? There's, there's some things you can pick out, and it's like, there's things that are important in a guitar and things that are not important. Things like, as you say, uh, you know, a, a not very brilliant looking binding fitting or... You know, it's like, oh, you know, the, the fret markers aren't quite centre. These things don't... Really, if you're paying a hundred pound for a guitar, that's fine. You just you want them to have spent the money, your hundred pound or your two hundred pound, on making the guitar good. So the extra fancy bits, I did, yeah, it's just not part of it. It's a couple hundred quid, but four and a half grand. My God. I'd be expecting just to go and it to play Hard Day's Night. Just without me having to do anything, you know, you don't need that fucking amp and all that bastards. And guitar tech pickups. The reason I mentioned that is because uh, 
we got a box of stuff, me and Jen, uh, my guy, uh, East Kilbride, somewhere, not East Kilbride, somewhere over in that direction. And then it was a, a Guitar Tech bridge. Guitar Tech by Wilkinson. Did you know that? So technically it's got Wilkinson pickups because Guitar Tech are Wilkinson. Wilkinson are under Guitar Tech. To put. But I've, I've never come, uh, the Guitar Tech things are good. They're high quality. Basically, they're kind of like your Warmans, but Warmans, Wilkinson, I think Iron Gear might be a wee bit up, Vanson. There's a few companies that kind of basically, they're basically kind of the same, I think, as the ones you get in China, but they are an, there are an upgrade to most guitars. You paid 90 quid for it. Those pickups would be an upgrade in any guitar you could buy new for 150 quid. Easy. As in it would be an upgrade. I bet you they're good. Oh. Uh, so, so it, it sounds brilliant, Amp Wells. Um, I, I did not know Pignos made anything other than that horrible little battery thing, which looks cool as fuck, but the difference between that and something like the Roland Cube is, I'm going to say a hun the Cube is a hundred times better than the Pignos. <laughs> it's like I could not get a sound that I found acceptable out of it, like, I, that I could play. I could not find anything... It's like clean, distorted, midi, but didn't, didn't anything. I could not get a sound out of it. It was absolutely fucking hanging. But I thought it looked cool. Um, behind the I used the Pignos 40. Possibly, yeah. Uh, oh, just, uh, the, the battery practice apps. But the thing is, it's like, you look at it, you go, oh, but in 1970 or 1975 or whenever they were about, I do get that the, the technology wasn't there to create a good battery amp so it was that or nothing i get that but when you start comparing it to i mean something like the Wii, I, I can't sing the praises of the the two cubes enough i mean it's just fucking hell it's like that microcube is a good guitar amp it, it's a good amp for the house straight up it's just good and then you go oh it's running batteries aye bonus <laughs> you know what i mean not but it's good and it runs no it's good considering it runs in batteries no it's just a good amp um and you can get because they're now i think that was probably 20 odd years old you can start picking them up for you know, 50 quid like, honestly i don't think you could get a better amp for 50 quid and it's battery powered but it's just like a pair it's not uh the original pignos are a product of the times probably they sound decent decent mixed up Probably, but then that's the sort of thing is like at, at a volume, there might be a volume, but it might not be a very big volume where you can make it up and get it. I think it was meant to be a um, it's kind of, is it not a harmonica amp, it had a very distinctive sound, and it wasn't a nice distinctive sound. Um, because I was looking at we, I, I think like the first we shitty battery powered amp was that, was that we Dean Markley thing, which is the same as the Marshall MS2. The wee tiny Marshall cab desktop one, I think. You think, oh, you've seen for a tenner. Yeah, but I think they're about 40 quid new or something like that. Those ones, I, so I had the wee Gene Markley. I think I got it in a box of bits. And it was, ah, oh, it's pretty good. Just, oh, yeah, totally, I can I can use that. So I could use it. It was acceptable. And then I bought the, the Marshall one, which was basically exactly the same amp, apart from it, the two, the bigger MS, MS4, the one you've got a double cab in it. <laughs> so two speakers and then the head had a variable overdrive not just a switch that turned the overdrive on in full and basically it was exactly the same amp as the wee tiny one apart from it just had a switch to put the overdrive at full didn't have a variable gain but it was too small to do that anyway and then i got that pig nose and both those amps fucking blew the pig nose out the water and then i got the black star fly which blew all of them out of the water it's like that's a completely different thing and then ended up with a I got a Line 6 one, which I'm going to sell, so I'm not going to say it's shite. And then that cube was just fucking ridiculous. So the, the base cube's even more ridiculous. But I didn't know what I had. My pal's fucking... He was rage, he's, he's ranting about it a few times. David is like, up here. I, I fucking keep looking for that base amp. So I was like, up here, hey, base amp is fucking amazing. He's like, ah, I saw the video. It looks fucking brilliant. I'm going to get one. up here. Hi, 40 quid. Fucking brilliant. And he's like, up here. Oi. <laughs> he bid 60 quid on one that was starting at 99p and it went for 180. Oh, I didn't know what I was buying. Those things are a 
to be honest, they're probably worth 150 quid, 180 quid, because it's that good. It's again, it's a really good base amp. Oh, and as a bonus, you can run it in batteries. But it's got a drum machine, it's a fucking amazing amp. Um so you can't find one. Um, but if you if you ever see one of them for sub a hundred, just buy it. It's fucking brilliant. Definitely for in the house. If you're playing the bass in the house, probably too small for gigging, but any amp in the house that's fucking fit. And I might even like it better than the big marshal. It costs more than the big marshal. <sighs> uh, tried any Benson amps? The only Benson I know is a sort of catalogue company thing. You know, making sort of uh, ele you know, electric guitar starter pack, £120 type thing. Benson guitars, I don't know if they did good ones. Also, the cubes are rock solid, never break down. Possibly, yeah. Roland know what they're doing. I mean, it's like, be honest, it's not as good as a proper valve combo or a valve amp for me because I'm a mad vintage buff. But does it do some things better than that? Aye. It's not as good at the sort of rat pedally, sort of slightly driven tubey overdrivey sounds, which I like to use a lot. But for clean, actually better. It does things that that doesn't do. The jazz chorus setting on it is fucking amazing, and the distortions are acceptable. And the thing that's even, I, I found this. I totally forgot about this. So I can just turn it on. Is it running on batteries? It's running on batteries. What does the batteries still run? Aye. It's got a fucking, I, it has an acoustic thing on it. And I thought, oh, it's got an acoustic amp mode. That's a great thing. I like that. But, but it's actually got, it's, it's not an acoustic amp mode like what the Line 6 got. It's actually an acoustic mode. So you can just fucking, it just fucking sounds like an acoustic. Like, what the fuck? Like, noticeably, you choose whatever sound you want. It kind of it sounds more it sounds more like an acoustic than like a piezo pickup into an electric amp. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. But I've got a talk box. I had a Dan Electro. I can't remember what it's called now. It was a Dan Electro one. Um, but I mean, acoustic. Free speech. That's the one. Yeah, I'll go for the jazz chorus because that's uh, the one that this does. I've put a wee bit of chorus on just to make it right. <laughs> Do the Yamaha THRs run in batteries? I did not know that. I I, I, I know I know what the amps look like, and they're fantastic. Um, on the Madri, I don't know what that is. No, oh, no, maybe, maybe I don't know. Um. I didn't, I didn't, the, the THX ones aren't battery, are they? Or there, is there a battery version of it? I know they're meant to be amazing, but on my side of this argument is I don't think you're going to get one for under 100 quid, whereas I think you've got a fair chance of getting a micro cube because they're tw you can get 20-year-old ones for under 50 quid. I paid 25. Without a power adapter, fair enough, so it's been running in battery since I got it. But I mean, I'm kind of doing an experiment to see how long they run. I did get a power supply with a base amp so I can swap them over. Um, no, I mean, if, if you if you do keep an eye on Facebook Marketplace and that, and if you see a, a cube for under 50 quid, just buy it. Yes, it's a, it's a, it's a, it does have a tie-dyed finish. It's a bit... I'm a, I'm, the problem is I've got... See, it's the same as I'm not using the battery pack, the, the wireless system. I'm sitting there at that point. Oh, the amp's on. Red light. Draining the battery, but I'm not playing. I can't... 
I can't deal with that. And that's not it's not rechargeable. You could obviously put rechargeable batteries in it. I'd imagine more modern ones probably are USB chargeable. That just runs on six AAs. That's the first set I've ever put in, but um obviously it's struggling to sound better than a seven hundred pound orange through a three by twelve cabinet that's got the speakers are worth. A thousand pound rig versus what cost me twenty five quid. So for that point, you can't really, you can't really argue. It doesn't even sound twice as good. But yeah, the better at gig. Yeah, no, the free speech was a different than the talk box because it kind of, you could put it on your pedal board. So rather than the talk box goes between your amp head and your speaker, like a proper original talk box, and then you get the rubber tube and all that and a microphone. Whereas the Dan Electro Free Speech is kind of like, uh, it, it, you can use it as a pedal, so it takes all the sound from your guitar, runs it up to the tube, has a mic and puts it in, so you can just put it in as a pedal. And to be honest, it totally worked. If it was in a Bon Jovi tribute band, I could totally have played a wah, 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 no problem. But, by God, does it hurt your jaw holding a... It's, like, it's You really have to want to use it. Um, oh, the katana minis are good. I don't think the again the katana minis are not only that size. I mean, Alex is not on tonight, but he might be watching it as um tomorrow night. He's got a wee Donner thing. It's pure tiny. And it sounds pretty good. You know, it's fine. That's fucking just a proper amp, though. It's kind of like it's in, on the line of the the black box, it's the black star bass. But you know that. I mean, the bass amp. I'll have to admit, if for the bass amp, you need the, the extension cabinet. The guitar amp's amazing. The problem is, I see if I bought this first, I didn't. I bought the Roland Cube first, and the Roland Cube is a really fucking good amp, and it's battery powered. Whereas this is like pure. Oh, a battery powered bass amp. That's awesome. It well, for a start, it costs a tenth as much. You know, it's, it's not. It's all right, but I was kind of ruined by the fact that I couldn't believe how good the Roland Cube was because I thought they were a hundred pound new. Um, oh. Oh. I love how that guitar's look a bit like the Paul Gilbert. Yeah, there is a bit of a Paul Gilbert fireman thing going on about it, isn't it? I did actually I, see before I assembled it. I, I basically got this for a, as a favor of my pal uh, in America for sanding a couple. It was a bit of a, an issue with some of the JPAX guitars, which get sent over. These are proper fucking. It's not. These are, this is a proper above. You get you know you get like yo, oh, oh, really expensive guitar. Oh, their premium model. Oh, their custom shop model. Handmade model. And and I'm going to put that in as well because I handmade it. But there's a different thing. What can you compare a Softec to? Depends which Softec you've got. Um, you can get the Mark 1 THR for about £100. You've got the it's high gain. It's great for everything. It's, uh, is that the green one? I think my pal's got, uh, he's got a green one. Uh, Taylor's got a green one. He's normally on at some point. He'll be gigging tonight. Um, I did. They run in batteries though, and the, the thing is, they've got a speakers in them. I'm a, shows you how much I've used them. They do have speakers in them, yeah, because it kind of looks like a head, but I, I assume behind the grill it's got speakers. But, but I, I don't doubt that they're a bit better. But then again, you are looking at. I'm a cheap bastard, right? We're going camping, or download. It gets fucking dropped in the lock. It falls off the boat, blah, blah, blah. It's £100. That was £25. Is it four times better for when you're camping and probably drunk anyway? No, but I mean, yes. If I had the need for it, I'm sure they're really good. Uh, what can you compare a soft tech to? It's a K. It's a soft tech. It, it's not there. I need to bring the other amp back through and bring it sitting in my hall. Um, the one I've got, I've got a MiG-60, and it's a... Uh, I, had, I remember I, I saved the I found the original ad in a magazine. It's uh it says in the advert it's a plexi type Marshall for those authentic Hendrix sounds, but in reality it sounds a bit more like a JCM eight hundred, a fifty watt JCM eight hundred. It's kind of what it is. Um, although every value of every component is slightly different because it's made from ex Soviet submarine parts. Whole thing's fucking hand wired. Never sell it ever. Um, actually, it's bizarre. I watched a video earlier on about um with JHS pedals. I was like a plug twice tonight. But worth watching. I don't really. I'm not really interested in pedals, but I like the folk who run it. I like the the guy seems 
I'd got on with him. He's a wee bit weird, and I like him. Um, yeah, no, it's like. The soft tech amps. I did. I I had no idea what it was. I had. I bought that brand new in for fifty quid in Victor Morris. Brand new fifty quid. If you can find a Mig sixty, I think it's fucking hand wired. It doesn't have any circuit boards in it. It's like you've got your valve base, and there's components going from the valve base to different things. Like fucking, it's ridiculous. Um. Oh. But there's other soft techs. Um. When I bought mine for 50 quid, they had a 100 watt one for 100 quid. And if I went back in time, I would buy the 100 watt one as well. But I didn't. It was, it was a full size. Of, that my soft takes only a small one. Uh, drinking white wine? Hey, uh, white wine? I don't like white wine. Mighty three inch speakers. But the thing is, that they, they cheat these days. Aren't they? I think that's got to be more than three inch. No, they, they're, there's technology. When you say speakers, that already tells me there's some voodoo going on in there. I bet you when you're using any of the, even without any effects, it does a thing where you're looking at it, it's that size. You know it's that size. You can see it. You plugged it in, but your ears hear that size. It totally does that. The, wee, um, the bass amp does that. See, the, the big difference in bass amp, it's not the volume. It's like, see if you've got the two of them, that and the extension speaker, and you put them together. It doesn't necessarily get louder, but instead of sounding like it's that size, it sounds like it's that size. There's trickery that goes on. I don't doubt it. And I'm talking about, I mean, I can't even imagine what a modern amp sounds like. Yamaha are fucking amazing. That cube's probably 20 odd years old, um, and it was amazing then. Any opinions or ideas about guitar picks? Oh, picks, as in picks. Um, hard, small, large is found. Out 40 years later, I prefer harder and smaller picks. Plectrum, I, I don't know how you call it. P-I-C-K, I would probably normally call it. Or you could call it plek. We used to laugh at the keyboard player in my band for calling them plek. And it's like, why? <laughs> it's like, it, was a, it was a shite thing. I used to get really upset about it. And that's why we fucking kept doing it. When it's like, no. What's plectrum, plek? Nothing about it. It's only because he went, they can call it a plate, you dick. He's like, hey, ha, ha, and he pure went into a tizzy, so we just kept doing it. Uh, it's like, um, soft tech is built like a tank. It's built from a tank, Aunt Wales. Basically, it's like that's where the tubes and shit, it's not fucking sitting there anymore. That's where the tubes and shit came from, are the ones that are in submarines and tanks and all that. Like the, those components, maybe not the tubes, but you know, capacitors and pots and shit are from. The same ones that went in Soviet tanks. Oh. I don't know. I mean, the, the, the picks, I, I bought a big bag of them. I was, I bought a uh, picks. In fact, that might actually be fucking one of them. Is that one of them? No. I went to status quo. Parfit was still alive at, at the SCCC before the hydro came out. And I bought, it was two status quo picks for 150 or something. Yeah. <laughs> I'll buy status quo picks. And they basically were 0.96 millimeter uh, Jim Dunlops, and they were red. They're normally black, and I decided that's the one I want. So I bought a wee bag of Alice picks that were 0.96. I don't know, ten for two quid or something. You know, they were cheap. I bought them. I was like, no, that, that's what I want. That's fine. And the thing is, I could use it for the bass and the guitar, so I didn't need to have bass picks and guitar picks. And then once. And they were, I think this, this might be one of that bag of 10, actually. And then I thought, ah, oh, that's fucking great. And I saw them and I was like, 0.96. So this is a, another Alice pick that says 0.96 on it. But it's twice as bendy as the 0.96. That, there, there's no consistency in it. That the, the original ones I bought were like the Jim Dunlop ones. These are more like a, a slightly less than that. And I bought a bag of 30 of them. So th these are the ones I'm stuck with. But I no longer play the bait. They're kind of... The reason I like the one millimeter and the 0.96 is because bass and guitar totally do them both. Yeah, I stopped using a pick on the bass because it's so much easier to play the bass, or you get so much more control playing with your fingers. So, and then now I've got that also for pick slides. The the thinner picks do a better pick slide with distortion and the bridge pickup. Oh, 
most Brett Valentine's in the Texas came from old Brett Tanks and Tank Radios. Probably, yeah, totally. Um, the cars go cars go 50 top, looks like it's made from tank parts, proper heavy duty components. Yeah, totally. The thing is, that see, when you I'm gonna to have to bring it back through. See, when you open up the soft tech and look inside it, it looks like a nuclear power station. I mean, we're talking okay, fair enough. Yep, you get British amps, I'm sure they look the same, right? Totally, but the Soviet ones got fucking. Soviet writing on it, so like the you know, like the, the capacitors have got like backwards K's and fucking ohm symbols in it, and you're like, Phew. it just makes it look, ah! Ah! whereas if I actually just said, I don't know, capacitor one, you'd be like, oh, it's a capacitor, no, it says, and you're up here, oh my god, thermonuclear detonation device, fucking amazing, and actually when I bought it, I was told that they couldn't make, it was, it, the amps were banned, you couldn't make amps like that anymore because of the radiation that came out of them, it's what I was told when I bought it. It's like, oh, that's right. Because that, I, I bought it, it must have been 10 years old, even though it's brand new. It had been in the shop for 10 years. Um, I was told it's because of the radiation. There is a grain of truth in that. There is a thing, a directive thing, a safety thing. So you can't actually make the soft tech anymore. You can make a version of it, but it's got to have safety bypasses and shit. It's not radiation. It's just something else. But yeah. Uh Eight eight mil Dunlop. I eight eight mil Dunlop are probably well. They're, they're probably between my ninety six. I told me. Small as a ship for me. Go for it. Don't come. I mean, that it's, it's one of those things. It's like there isn't a best pick. There's a pick that you find the comfiest for how you play. Um, I'm I'm a cheap bastard. I I, I love the fact. The reason I bought thirty picks that were the same was like I've just so basically obviously I'm running through them, but they're all the same one. Ah, it's so much better than having because obviously everyone I assume everyone of my generation anyway, when they bought their guitar, they got given a handful of picks. A shark fin, always a shark fin in there, which you've still got, because I've still got mine. Mine was a thin, transparent one, and there was actually I got two, and I got a really fat, but you get your first half dozen picks, and the first half dozen picks you get are the ones that the guy who you bought your first guitar off gave you because those are the ones that are not in the usable range you get ones that are far too thin and ones that are like two pence pieces because yeah, I never use them you can hear hey, here's, a, here's a handful of picks for you and they pull them out of the pocket even though they've looked through all the picks that they get sick of so basically I would just go and fucking buy a set of Alice ones I think I paid £3 for 30 of them and I've still got the bag still kicking about somewhere I don't, know. I don't have that many left but look, look at the colour of the bag that was transparent when I got it. There's still 10 in there I've never even got to. 0.96 Alice picks. And see if you actually get 0.96. They're fine. They're maybe a little bit heavy. But um, if you get the ones I've got, which are definitely not, they're definitely thinner, even though they say 0.96 on them. They're great. Oh. I use nines for economy. Are you talking about guitar? Strings? All vibes jive off issues. <laughs> yeah, I know that valves are crazy. Um, an old an old system. Isn't it? You make me want a soft tech even more. Than Honestly, it's the most amazing thing. I'm going to fucking go and get it. Right, fuck you. Have I, have I got room to put it? If I move some of this shit, I can put it. It's, there's no way I should. I should not be sitting with an original, original bought brand new soft tech. Oh, no, I can't. I've just thought about it, and there's three amps on top of it. The soft tech's on the bottom, there's the cows, bro, and then there's more, and then there's shit on top of it, so I can't. But the soft tech is just like, it's a and I, first amp, first real amp I bought. And see, to be honest, I had that amp, right, for a couple of years before I ever I ever really used it. I, took, I used to take it into the studio, and it sounded fucking amazing. But in the house, I couldn't be bothered turning on the valve thing and waiting for a couple of minutes and then waiting for the standby to come on and then playing it. Uh, fuck that. So I used a wee fucking BB blaster, shitty 10 watt thing, like until later on when I suddenly realised, hold on, that amp is something else. Um, if you ever see a soft tech, buy it. Straight up. Uh, if a countdown starts on that soft tech run, Yes. But there's no countdown, no, because you would see it. So honestly, it's all fucking, it looks, it totally looks like the inside of a bomb. 
just don't sit and over and keep warm. Your bum will glow in the dark. Yeah. I actually do remember having that soft tech in the studio with my band and outside waiting in the, the snow for the taxi to come and pick us up uh, outside the, uh, what was called the Brill Building. I can't remember what it's called now, just at the Tron Theatre. And sitting on the av- on the soft tech, which had just been rocking for three hours, and everyone else was pure. Oh my god, it's fucking freezing! I'm like that pure oh, with my pure toasted buttocks from sitting on top of that soft tech, and it melted. But the soft tech's that size. For the ten minutes we were waiting, it melted a circle that size in the snow. Amazing. Ah. Oh. So that like Gibson Jen post earlier on. Yeah, I hope, I hope, hope all you guys follow Jen. It's interesting. You get to see a bit of me. I actually put the first post I had on Mad Marco Guitars for ages. I have been trying to switch. I need to, I just need to do it. I just can't be bothered. Fuck it. Now that the sun's nice, I might, um, the weather's back. Yeah. That's just like one of our pals. It's just, I think it's, it's one of our pals' husband or something like that owns it. It's like it's got a Selmer amp as well, uh, which looks. Proper, proper beaten up, but it's a proper tube amp by a tube of 12. Um, uh, hey, Pontiac! But yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, oh, I was like, this, I was like, look at it, I was like, it's just a pure, it's a Gibson 335. Like, oh, I think it's 40 years old. It's a Gibson 335 that's 40 years old. And I've, I've, none of you have seen it, you've seen pictures of it, never, there was actually a video of it, and it's mint condition. It's like, see the, the tarnish you get on gold pickups. None of that. And it's got the, it's in the case and all that. It's fucking mint from 1988. I looked up the serial number. So, I mean, I was just like, look, I looked up a, a, a 1988 335 and the cheapest one I could see was three and a half grand and it was red and pretty beat up. This one's white. Must be worth more money because normally they're red or cherry red and it's in mint condition. So, I mean, so we might actually be going over to Fife. Uh, just to, I'll get a video out of it. Just because it's a chance of playing a guitar that's worth five grand. Something like that. It's worth five times all the guitars you see in this room, kind of thing. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> so, all put together. Um, I don't know Taylor Swift. Actually, the people we were staying with, BL Guitars in Pennsylvania, said she was good. Don't watch telly anymore. I'm too old to care about anything like that. I don't know. Is she that bad? That Russian guy, Sean Connery. It's like pure. Yes. D- d- sh- yeah. I'm not going to try to do a Sean Connery accent. My fa- same year in college, my last Paul Custer worked here to buy that. My favourite guitar and my favourite colour. And for my first year, the ultimate guitar for a Manix fan like me. Oh, well, Aunt Wales, honestly, I can get you cheaper than what it'll go for. It'll not be cheap, but I'm 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 going to go and play it and do a video on it. Right, wait for that. And basically, obviously they're sitting looking at it as I, I mean, I've never seen it, but I mean it's meant to be brand new. So I'm thinking they're sitting there going up here, new set of strings, bit of contact cleaner in the pots because they've probably not been turned for years. Um, if it's good, uh, get in first because these people, Jen's pal, don't really know what it is really, and if you're looking at selling it and posting it and then and then and putting it in reverb and then, 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 then you know if it's a case of my pal will buy it you'll get it for less if you if, if that's really what you're after but it's still going to be fucking four grand or, or something i don't know i've not really done any investigation on it i assume it's in, it says it's perfect condition like but like new Yeah, um, I suppose I, I, I like your new studio as well. I saw it like, last week. I was too busy telling you about that switch that I made, I made an arse of. All right, so just to get some... Yeah, no, it's looking good. But, uh, how, are you, how, how are you filming it, Mr. White? I mean, I'm using a, a webcam and shit, so it's kind of set up, and I've got... These, these mics are cheap and shite. Um, I'm going to do it properly. Uh, definitely a pretty reason. But that's the thing. It's like... I can't honestly say that it's worth it i've never played it but honestly what do you think of this guitar random guitar i've never seen before know nothing about give me a shot of it oh yeah, yeah it's pretty good is it worth three grand or four grand 
it's so beyond anything I can comprehend. How can a guitar? It's one of those ones that's got the value of it as a guitar. I don't think it's worth that because you can get a guitar. Well, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. I'm maybe just really lucky. I've gone from the same as everyone did. Shite guitars that aren't set up. Epiphones. And then I got a, a real Gibson SG. And then I realised that you could get Hondos and I bought a Schecter. Da, 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 da. And I found Japanese guitars and I've got a few Japanese guitars that are at least on a par with most of the guitars you'll find new for sub a couple of three grand. You know what I mean? I was lucky. And now I've got two guitars that are hand-built. Not talking about, oh, yeah, how many in the run? No, 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 no. Hand-built. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, totally. I get it. They're hand-built in the factory. How many did they make? No, 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 no. There's one. Made by one person, different person, Mr. Corker or Mr. Kraken are different people. But so is this guitar, there's another, there's, there's not another one of these anywhere in the world. There's a couple that are remotely like it, but not the same, not the same outline, kind of similar shape, but different. This horn thing is different lengths and a different angle and the, the contour on it. This doesn't really have much contour on it because it's a, uh, it was meant to be budget, you know, all these things. So I kind of, uh, I forgot to say, waiting for some ABBA songs. Really? I fucking was playing ABBA earlier. I need to play a different one then. Eh? Shite would be a great name on the headstock. <laughs> That's one of the things. That, see, if, honestly, if someone, well, my pal Dave actually sent me this, um, or he have been talking to us up here, this is, this is his design. Ergonomically, it's unbelievable. Um, it's totally fine. This looks weird from the front. You don't notice until you look down at it. It sits, it's, it's a basically this is a fucking telecaster. I don't if I just had a different type of bridge and not that thing, it would still be a telly. I don't know what makes something a telly. It sounds ridiculous, but this is a telly. Um I've got tellies that aren't as telly as this, but it's got a bit of a different uh But there's not enough, on a purely practical, there's not enough room for a logo on this headstock. Well, I suppose you could be a wee shitey logo, you know what I mean? But there's not enough room for a head, like this headstock. Steam is cacked up. Oh, it's back. Oh, sorry. I, I, well, I, I don't really have any, any say in it. Oh, he spiked those likes. Dudes, please. Cheers. Have you been have you, have you been hitting my adverts? I've not seen the wee thing. Maybe it's because I'm already steaming, but there's a wee thing on the bottom that tells me when adverts are going and I can skip them. I've not seen that yet. Ah. Uh. Short riff so we can relax and drink a bit. Someone asked for ABBA. What? I was already, I started off. I'm just fine. Now I'm, now I'm drunk, so it'll be better. And then ditch the. Is it in D? Sorry. Neck pick up. I've been waiting so long since I knew from the start. I'm drunk now, and I'm now on a pun. Look at me now, I'm going down. I can see how I'm going down within my soul. There's a fire within my soul. Just one look at me. Just one look at that thing, everything. Oh, oh, Mamma Mia, here it go again. Bye bye, just a match I missed you. Mamma Mia, here it go again. Bye bye, just a match I missed you. Oh, since the broken hearted. Oh, since the thing we parted. Why, why did you ever let me go? Mamma Mia. Mama, did you ever let you go? 50 years since Waterloo. Ah, Mama, it's, it's got to be in Dina. Just start as soon as it starts in D. Mama, Mama. 
I've never played it before. Well, it's surely about to go. And I'm too drunk to actually learn that. I don't know that one. Um, I can play some of it. <sighs> yeah, I, I did work out a place about if you saw it in my disco bass thing, that's I'd obviously be transferred to bass. And it's like, well, it can't be hard though, it's got to be da 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 it's in there. If it was sober, I could totally work that out. <sighs> if I had Benny and Bonnie been called Abs, Sam and Dave, it would have been Asda. Yeah, but the thing is, it never really worked anyway because one of them not called Frida. It's like Nitha, Benny, Bjorn, and Frida. So they obviously went, let's call us Ab. No, no, try. Fba. No, what about Fab? Faba? Abba. Let, fuck it. Let's just call it Abba and Frida. You're an A as well. All right. Um, <laughs> oh my God, Mr. White Snake. I have, I feel so sorry for your wife. Even more now, I kind of felt sorry for her anyway. But now that you're making her watch this shit, oh my God, you deserve a medal, Mrs. W. Uh, what's got to happen? <laughs> Uh, I was, I was, I was, I was watching earlier on. Oh, fucking me! Oh, I couldn't play it. Oh, uh, da, da. Uh, D. I think it's an E. No, it's D. Get ready to rock. Get ready to roll. Don't need no life preserver. Don't need no one to host me down. Pizzy car. Get ready to run. Get ready to roll. Gotta find out a hum. Gotta take it out of control. You gotta keep those engines burning. Keep those engines clean. Yeah, no, basically I watched, um, I don't know why, oh, was, uh, fuck it. if you've never, uh, only for Scottish people, I hate football, have hated everything about football ever, but I kind of always liked Ali McCoy because I always thought he was a bit funny. So there's a video of someone posted on Facebook this morning of, um, I don't know, he's, at some, he's on his pitch side at some fucking football game, I don't know what the fuck it is. And it's obviously mid-interview. He stands at the pitch side. I don't know, is he a manager? I don't even know what he fucking does now. Is he a manager or something? Or whatever. Anyway, someone's interviewing him. And he's up here. Yeah, yeah, he's up here. Oh, hold on. Dong. He's like, no, no. Oh, really? Dong. He's like, see if a guitar comes in here. And the... It's like, you know... <laughs> I can catch it. <laughs> And he's like, ah, as, as, it's hell's bells. And he, you can see him as that pair. Whatever, the, whoever's fucking interviewing, poor person. So I, I, I fucking, I'm playing ACDC. ACDC here. And he's like that pair, because obviously ACDC are the best at build up. So he's like that pair. He's like that pair. Yeah, it's a good set. It's, it's a good playlist. He's like, yeah, it's that pair. Yeah, that's hell's bells. Hi. That's what they opened with when I saw him in the Glasgow Apollo in 1980. And then the guy's talking to him, and he's like, up here. 
you can see him and it's like at that moment it's like, i just love the power of music at that moment ali mccoist football player for whatever in 2024 in some european stadium somewhere he was in the glasgow apollo aged as a teenager at that moment and you could just see it the guy's talking to him you keep him going waiting for the drums to kick in and it's fucking brilliant i do i like ali mccoist i don't like football but i mean yeah it's, just, it's funny when you just see somebody and it's the unadulterated it's happier oh dung you know, so just, just from the dung it's like no that can he be dung I don't know why he thought it was that strange to play Hell's Bells but I mean so, oh, that was brilliant <laughs> Swedish songs for some decades had lyrics including the word Lou really Maybe, I don't know. Lou means toilet here, I suppose. Abba's name of uh, fish. Abba, yes. <laughs> right, I'm enough to drink. I'm going outside now to empty cans at passing cars. Okay. I don't really know what that means. <laughs> there you go. It's done it because I'm, I'm quite happy. I've not actually, I'm going to, I'm sitting here thinking what I really want is after. And oh, I didn't. Did I? Did I? Did I? Bastard, that was earlier on. I thought, when I remember when I rolled the last cigarette before I started, it was up here. I should probably... Yeah. Live stream. I didn't. I rolled one and smoked it before I came. Oh, in fact, I, I didn't actually. There you go. What I did was, I rolled it, sparked it, and went, oh my God, it's five minutes to I better start it first. So, two thirds of a roll up. That should keep me going. Um, now I've got to find the lighter. Yeah, it is. Oh. That's really annoying me, that noise. I can't deal with that noise from the rap pedal. How can I stop it? I suppose to see if I put the tuner after it and use it as a noise gate. I don't know. Oh. What's the hardest thing you try to play the guitar? I've never... When you say tried to play it, I assume you mean actually spent some time trying to play. There's some things I've tried to play and you give up after three minutes and go, look, fucking, that's ridiculous. It's uh, um, The One by Baby Metal. And to be totally honest, I think I understood. I was doing it the, the... I learned it from a book way, whereas now, with my newfound ability to go... I think I can maybe understand why those notes are there, not just playing it as an, oh no, it's the 14th fret there, the set 12th fret there. You know, I think I can actually understand how it does it. <laughs> Baby metal, ridiculous, right? Shocking, different from anything else. The one, the song, the one is fucking... It's, it's got a guitar gods on it. I mean, these folk are playing the guitar. It's like, I've seen baby metal a few times and uh, it's not necessarily the music. It's the musicians that are in that band. They're called the, the original Japanese band are called the Kami band, which is a gods band. It's the gods band. If you put it in and they're, they are, it's one of those people when you see somebody playing the guitar or the bass or the drums, they're just at a level that are beyond them playing anything that you know what they're doing at all. You know what I mean? It's like you watch Slash play and it's like, maybe I can't play it, but I, I can see what he's doing or Dave Gilmore. I can see it. Baby Metal, you're just like, it's like it's like Alan Holdsworth, um, their, their main guitarist was a, it used to be, the band were a, an Alan Holdsworth fucking tribute band. They, they still are and you're like, right? Really? And that's fucking ridiculous. Uh, but the hardest thing I've ever tried to play is the one by uh, Baby Metal, which is amazing. I think the hardest thing I ever kind of got um, it through was, uh, which I did learn note for note, although I didn't have it in tab. I must have worked out myself. Uh, Spaceship One by Paul Gilbert, which is really good as well. With a classic piece of acoustic guitar that I made when I got fired, kicked out after five years of guitar stuff, for fuck's sake. I actually bought a a, a Yamaha, it was a Yamaha for fuck's sake, like nylon string guitar in the block market for a tenor last week. 
I know it was one of those ones. It's a Yamaha and I played it. It's, it's fucking it's brilliant. I kind of don't want to sell it. It's like I'm not fucking selling it for a tenner. Fuck off. I'll just keep it and keep it in the car. It's like totally playable. And I lost two or three hours playing it going, ah, really? It's got the proper really fat wide neck and all that. Some things just really work. It's amazing. The best line from the course was somebody says he got pulled off at half time and he said, he only got an orange. No, I, it's, it's one of those, I think I've seen him, was he on Question of Sport or something? Because obviously he was in Rangers when I was at school. He's on Question of Sport or something, and he was always kind of quite funny, sort of like, a bit, he could play football when he was obviously into it, but he wasn't like the other folk, he was a bit, what well, us, you know what I mean? I don't know, I always felt that. I do remember one time me and my pal, I think it was my, me and my pal Michael were, went up to Loch Fine, and Ali McCoy has that little, what we always thought was Ali McCoy's fucking house. There's a bit on Loch Fine. So we made my pal Michael, like, we two hours per engine. Nah! Bottle of Bucky, went to Inverary, got chips, came back out, had starting the beers, and then somebody phoned on my original Nokia cell phone. And it was like, because we were been sitting there listening to this wee engine, just sitting, you know, that far away from us, going, nah, you're up here. Hi, yeah, totally. Hi, you're, you're sitting there. And it's like, we turned the engine off. So if you imagine on an entirely quiet lock, basically people can hear you a mile away talking. You're shouting though. And we were maybe 20 yards off, off the shore outside Ali McCoy's house. And we're sitting there like, full up. I totally, I, I, gee, I totally, I, I, were, I, 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 were, I were just outside Ali McCoy's house, you know what I mean? I, I get pissed, I'll see you tomorrow night. Uh, all that crap. It was up here, it's just a two minute phone call, but still shouting because we're drunk. Basically had a bottle of Bucky and beers and we were outside. Uh, you know, put the phone down and put it in my pocket and then looked over at Ali McCoy's house and him and his family were sitting on the, the veranda. But I just going, all waving and it was like hey shit. Here, go 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 quick faster and it's like we really had a two horsepower motor so it took us like a, no joking five minutes to get without oh, it was terrible but yeah so he's obviously funny and his family are obviously funny as well because they obviously heard me say oh we're just outside Ali McCoy's house so they're sitting there having a quiet barbecue looking over in Verary absolutely beautiful glass cam sun going down Two arseholes sitting 20 yards away in a rubber boat, steaming, going, ah, and talking shit. Yeah. So he didn't. <laughs> I think he actually went, hi. <laughs> oh, no, you can fucking hear us. That's awful. Uh, uh, maybe the hardest thing to play was playing bass solo for Mr. Pink. I think anything by level 42 is going to be impossible. I've never even tried it. 16 years old. Oh, no, God. Oh. Uh, Grew up with level 22. I did see um in a rubber boat, eh? Well, it was a rib, actually, if anyone is into boats. A flat craft force three with a two horsepower on it. So it was a, it was a solid hull, but yeah, yeah. Um I don't really know any level 42, but during lockdown, him and his wife, I think, and some sort of backing track did a thing. He lives in the is it he lives in the Isle of Wight. Isle of Wight, so he couldn't go out. So basically he was just sitting in his studio room waiting and he'd appear him and his wife had appeared dressed up and they were just playing along with like the drums and the bass and the drums and the guitar were on a backing track or whatever and he was playing along with him the bass when you know appeared dressed up in full stage gear with the glitter on it and it was fucking brilliant he was funny as fuck i really like him um i maybe don't necessarily really love any of the music but when you see him playing it somebody playing a bass like that live and singing it's like oh you can't help but appreciate it it's maybe not what i would choose to play but i mean fucking amazing Mesmo Forty and Gino Villa, I don't know who they are. And yes, oh my God. It's about, yeah, I mean, maybe I was just lucky that I, my favourite band when I started playing the guitar was Black Sabbath. So, from the first, the first thing I ever learned was... And it was like, that's what I did the first time I ever played a guitar. And it was like, oh, wow, I can do this. And then it was like, oh, hold on, I can work out other songs. And it was like. For me, it doesn't work for everyone, but the power chord challenge, and it really worked out that I got that from a book. And there was songs that weren't in the book that I could just work out and go like up here, well. All these songs seem to be this power chord, so it's like. Oh, baby. 
right now. Won't you listen? When I first met you, humbucker, I realized I can't forget you. And your surprise, you introduced me to my mind and left me wanting you and your car. Although to be honest, I never really liked that because that was too much of the sliding down in the two shape chords rather than being the switching from. You know. <sighs> Give us some blacks. Obviously, I didn't even read that. You're coming out automatically, went and played it. Yeah, totally. Lockdown is censored. Yeah. I get it. Ah, so what? I did all right. And that's when I started moving. My pal suggested I just fucking, why you do a video every day? And it's like, ah, well, okay. Well, why not? I'm not doing anything else anyway. And then suddenly it's now just a thing. I mean, some of the videos are shite, I will admit it. And but the thing is, you can't really tell because I do videos and it's like, there's ones that I've thought about what I'm doing. I've got like a really good subject. And it's like, here we go. It's like, ah, oh, video went really well. I thought I played it really well. And it's like, it doesn't really do anything. But then, you do one where it's like uh, the, the classic one is so I was like, oh, fuck, I'm gonna put it. I can't put it out at night. I put it up at lunchtime with me walking to go and get my car outed. Fucking twice as many views as anything else. Everyone was commenting on it. You're like, all right, what do they want? Oh. They did it here, but they, they censored censored sweet leaf. That's actually not one we play in the Sabbath band at the current moment. Um I, I, I wish I could play it. It's, it's, no, it's in C sharp, isn't it? That's no, like C sharp. Never played it in the guitar for. I um, censored rubber boats. Who's getting locked down? Oh, yeah, yeah. Then we all think locked down. It kind of does feel a bit like a thing. I remember going out, um, like once it had been announced, and then I don't know that week as I was up here, I'd, I'd run out of food, so I had to walk to the shop because you're allowed to do that with a mask on. And walk into the shop and not passing a car. And it was like, what's going on? It was so bizarre. Um, oh, I'm, I'm, I mean, we survived. It was tough, but I mean, really shat it. Really shat it. Um, had it a few times. I got it, got it a couple of times. Uh, need it a tarp. So. Got it under the tarp thing. You don't need a tarp if you're out in the boat. You can just basically see once you get back home, you just take off the engine and then flip it upside down, hose it up. Yeah, no need track. Prog album Tarp of Hope. Did I did uh, did um I have you ever heard of Emerson Lake and Palmer and their album called Tarpus? It's all about I uh, yeah totally. 
<laughs> I like the no cars the road thingy. Yeah, but I remember I was going and buying it. The thing is, what it did do for me was like I was thinking I had to go. I was still fucking. I needed to work, so I was out getting fucking picking up guitars and buying and selling and sort of within reason. But I was aiming for. I had an excuse for any time I get stopped. I remember driving in the motorway, and I was like, you know, try to talk, go to my pal's house or, or not my pal's house. I was trying to fix guitars. And it was like, well, I, I do need to go to Asda and get shopping, and. Technically, it's only a five-minute detour, so it became this whole thing about any time I'm out in the car now, because in those things, I was thinking along the lines of, right, well, I've got to go to the shop, so having a wee bit of a five-minute detour, it's all right to go and pick up something or drop off or sell something, you know what I mean, or to, to fix. Um, uh, found a boat, it starts pouring rain, a tap with a welcome sight. Well, yeah, totally, but I had an umbrella in my boat, like permanently. In case that was the case, um, it doesn't really work when you're my, my boat's like you can water ski behind it, so it's like pure. It does have a windscreen, so basically, if you go fast, you don't get wet. There's always that option, but if it's rainy, if it's if it's rough as well, if you want to stop, you get to work in twenty minutes. I love lockdown. I'm I have to say that I didn't suffer much from it. Um, I kind of I didn't like it. I did watch Star Trek: The Next Generation though for the first time ever. As soon as it was announced, it was like, because ah, oh, my pal I had Netflix, my pal had Netflix. I was like, ah, I'm going to watch Star Trek The Next Generation from the start. And it, although I've seen it hundreds of times and blah, 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 I've seen the same, some of the episodes I've probably seen 10, 10 times. There were a good, uh, maybe not one in four, a bit more than that, maybe one in five or one in six episodes I'd never seen at all. And other ones I'd seen bits of. But it was, it was amazing. I um, really enjoyed it. Um, it was an excuse to play the guitar all the time. Next question: Had my revelation about doing arpeggios back then. I'm going to have to roll another fag because that was only half a fag. It wasn't enough. I've become accustomed to having a whole fag. That's the problem with roll ups. Uh, but I've been told what to do and where I can can and can't do doesn't sit with me personally. I get it. Yeah, uh, it's it's difficult, and it um, it's just I don't know. I think we've we've all got that thing in your head where it's like, don't you fucking tell me what to do. It's just how well you can handle that to not be riled up by somebody telling you you can't do it. I mean, I, I get we all go through. I used, I, I used to get I got it with guitars, and I got it with. Why and you know put my stereo together? It's like all the time, and it's like pure something. I, I was told so many times. I was like pure. I think it was Josie Warman. It really got me into the the mad guitar wiring thing. And I was like, I'd put it on. I can't even remember what the ultimate whatever guitar one. Josie Warman was obviously a member of it though. I was like, I want to put blah blah blah. I'm thinking, see if is there any way of putting. You know, like I've got this flying V, and I've got two sets of quad rail humbuckers. So there's basically four coils in each pickup. I want an on and off switch to put them all in series to make one massive eight coil humbucker. And all these experts, I've been a luthier for 50 years. Oh, it's like, can't do it. There'll be feedback and all the magnetic pull and blah, 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 blah. maybe 10 folk replied going, don't be so fucking stupid. My God, you get off our page, you scum. How big do you think that? And Josie Warman said, that sounds mental. I don't think it will sound particularly good, but it can be done. Do it. So I worked it out and did it. And that that's and that was a, that was the decimator, which was basically it turned out because the two screws I'd used to hold the two halves of the guitar it was like a pancake construction made out of piranha pine. Were there as happy? It's all glued now. So I take those screws out. Uh, fuck it, I put a, a, a jewel on it. So it basically turned out to be ten coils and I put 10 fucking switches down the side of a flying V all wired in series so basically you could have any one of the 10 coils on or any combination up to 10 coils in any combination um, and I was told by so many experts online I've been a luthier for 40 years I've wired a thousand guitars I know all that if it can't be done and Josie Warman was the one person who said I've no idea how you'll do it but do it. Damn it. I just spilled the tobacco on the floor. But yeah, so I get it. I get it. 
I think one of the things you've got to think about is that see on the internet, especially, especially internet forums. See the people who know how things work, they're not on forums. You will not get somebody who actually knows how to wire a guitar on a guitar wiring forum. Because I get invited to one, actually, by the, the guy Dave who built this. Ah, oh, you might like this page. And it was just people who didn't get it. So you're up here, oh, I've got an HSS, blah, blah, blah. Have you got the wiring diagram? And people are just looking up Google. Google, here you go. Here's the Google diagram. And you're like, that's not what he asked. He doesn't know. You don't know. And it's like, oh, that, my guitar's not working. Here's a photo in the back. Where'd I put the red wire? And it's like, yeah, well, what, what wire is it? It's the red wire. Where does it come from? It's the red wire. I just want to know where the red wire goes. Yeah, but I mean, is it like from the neck? Back? It's the red wire. I'll tell me where to put the red wire. I don't want, I don't want to know. I'd, no, no, no. I don't want to know if it's a coil split wire or if it's from a pickup or it's an earth. No, 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 no. Just tell me where to put the red wire. And you're like that. And it's like, that's it. Because nobody actually understands. It's shite. Um, don't believe anything you ever read in any forums. <laughs> And on, on or on YouTube, unless it's me, because I'm true. Well, I might be wrong, but I know. Well, I'm, I'm not likely to be wrong. <sighs> Tarkus is the best. Yeah, but have you heard Tarpus? That's by Emerson, Emerson Lake and ELT. Emerson Lake and Tarp. Holland. Yeah. <laughs> it's got an amazing album cover. It's like it was, I, I, I mean, I, to be honest, I did listen to it. I bought it because I was like, this exists. There's an album that's a concept album about mad armadillo tanks on some planet. That's got to be interesting. I've never, apart from fanfare from the common man and I suppose uh, America by the nice, which I suppose isn't ELP, I've never really understood Emerson, Lake and Palmer. I'm sure. I maybe need to listen to it again. These are things that I listened to 30 years ago when I bought the record and went, oh, I don't like that. That's not Caravan or Mike Oldfield. Which I could have been. Uh, my ghetto was devastated. Everything was closed. Walmart, Family Dollar, Walgreens Corporation. Oh, Jesus. No pass, no mask. <sighs> when that guitar. It's going to production by not outsource to AliExpress. I wouldn't outsource to AliExpress. I would pick I would outsource to China totally. I don't know. I mean, the guy is he's picking, he knows some famous folk and stuff and try it's his guitars that he builds are do sell and stuff. He was just, I think one of the things he was talking about was uh I really don't want to build another telly or another strat or another Les Paul because that's what everyone wants. Yeah, they're paying three grand or whatever plus but I had made telly and he's just like, I get it. I struggle to do things that I don't find interesting. It's like I was talking about my friend Edward. He's like up here. Oh, he, he, he's one of the, uh, he kind of buys and sells guitars, but he's right into, um, I suppose there's another guy I know in Glen Rothis, um, Aaron, who are into guitars that look like, up here, oh, what do you think of this? This looks exactly like Mike Oldfield, uh, no, not Mike Oldfield too, uh, 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 Stevie Ray Vaughan's guitar. This was exactly like Gary Moore's guitar. This was, so they're, they're into guitars that are guitars of the stars, which I don't really get. I don't understand that concept. I mean, not, not fair dues to you if that's what you're into. Um, but he was talking about trying to get my, that uh, Les Paul I've got with the P90s in it that's uh, been sanded back that I got cheap at Christmas. So I'll make it into a, a, a gold top and relic it and you'll sell it no problem. And it's like, I, I I understand that point. I get I get it that like a, a relic gold top two P ninety Gibson Les Paul is a desirable thing. Yeah, totally. I don't want to. Pl I'm not interested in it. So it's really difficult to do it because obviously it's a lot of work painting it gold and relic. It. I just it's not something I want to play. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, oh, here's a gold top. Do you want a shot of it? I totally. Do you want it? No, not really. I'm not. Whereas I, I want to try and build things that are exciting no one's ever done this before oh what's this going to sound like even something like this okay it's a crazy shape but the five-way switch I, I, I'm, I can't believe i managed to find a cortex switch it's like this this is a, it's a special switch i was like yeah yeah there we go. Oh, there we go. And it's like i was really excited to play this guitar because i didn't know what it was going to sound like or what it was going to be whereas oh why don't you make a 
Dave Gilmore guitar. It's like you get Dave, Dave Gilmore guitars. Why? Why? What? I, I don't. I don't get it. Uh, I don't care about what was in my ear. I mean, she's a four hundred and forty percent up where the wires go. There you go. I don't know, um, Pontiac. It's there's a Parker Fly, which that like they're obviously the the carbon fiber. The original Parker Flies are a bit more angular and shit. But there was a wooden. When I say budget, I don't think it was very cheap. But there was a cheaper version. It was made of wood, which is kind of going in this direction. Also. An Ernie Ball bongo bass, kind of a wee bit like a West Tone Pantera as well, sort of somewhere. I don't know, but it's, it's, it's such a strange thing because, see, because we are so used to looking at, I mean, I, I, I get it, we're so used to looking at tellies and strats or the Les Pauls and SGs when they're slightly off. It's like I, I, I done an ESP Viper, it was a cheap a Viper 50. And it was honestly as good as my Gibson SG. Honestly, I think I bought it for 30 quid and sold it for 100 quid. But it was like, a, basically, imagine an SG, but they'd moved the horns like that. So it kind of looked a wee bit like a like a jazz bass kind of version of an SG. And I, could, I just couldn't stomach it. No. I just, if it hadn't been an SG shape, it would have been fucking amazing. But it wasn't. It was offset SGs. And I've called it an ESP vibe. I can't, I can't live with that. Not for any reasons of playability, performance. It was a fucking brilliant guitar. I just couldn't stand looking at it. And these things happen with a lot of crazy guitars. What I do is, I mean, even the Corker, I was not, I was so impressed with the what the build quality of it, but I didn't like the shape. And what you do is you stick, stick it above your telly for a week. So you're not consciously looking at it. It's just there and your brain gets used to it. So I did that with this. I know I think it's cool. I think it was a nice haul in the 70s. Oh. Yeah, totally. What's the best name you've heard for a guitar? I would pro. I do have the Aria Blade Runner. That's quite cool. Because it's got blade pickups. Um... I really like the names of the Washburn Wings where you can get like a raven, a falcon, a hawk, and a raven, hawk, falcon, eagle. I really, I really like that. That's a good name for a band. Uh, Aria were good. They had a Night Warrior with a K. Night Warrior. Um, I had a Metal Master by Aria. Those names were good. I've got a Rock Device. <laughs> rock Device, yeah. I, I bought it because it said Rock Device on it and it has two PB pickups at an angle uh, but I mean you, you, you bump out to the best name Telecaster and Stratocaster are both fantastic names I'm, I'm, none of the other Fender ones have the power of Telecaster because it's not it's not obvious where it came from I suppose it's television maybe or something and Stratocaster's well, it came obviously. It started off as they were originally called Broadcaster, and then Gretsch had drums called Broadcaster, spelt differently or something. So they got sued, and they had to make them. They made it Teleca Telecaster, Stratocaster, are probably the best two names because it's, it's a word that it just sounds cool, regardless of what it is. Uh, yeah, Washburn Hawk is cool. But it's more cool that they're all birds of prey, even though it's really annoying that they're not all birds of prey. Raven's not a bird of prey, it's a crow. It's a corvin. So you want you should there should be ranges, there should have been it shouldn't have been Raven, it should have been Kestrel, should have been in there. And when you go to the bases, there's like Vulture, that's fine. Scavenger. No, why is it not another type of bird of prey? Scavenger's more like a, a it's not it's not a type of fucking bird, you know what I mean? Oh. I don't know, acoustic called a string thing. I quite like that. I do like, is it Tokai have a, you, you can't do an expensive now, but I like a breezy sound and a springy sound. I quite like them. Um, I like Kraken. 
Kraken, the Kraken's a good name for a guitar. Uh, the Shocking Birds are good. I, I, these are ones I've named, so obviously I chose the names, so I like them. Let me, let us have a look and see what's what's on the wall. Stratocaster, great name. Telecaster, great name. P bass, well, it's sort of a P bass. I mean that that's actually I, I actually put a thing on the back of this to say what it was called. I printed it out on my lecture set. This is a a JPS fifty. Doesn't that just roll off the tongue? So there's your JPS fifty. Um, an RG with a number. That's a Yamaha. It's just a fucking. It's just letters and a number. It's a PGM for Paul Gilbert. Road Star is not bad, but it's an RG. Corker, I've grown to like. I thought it, it sounds kind of sounds like a comedy name though. So like, not sure Corker means in America what it means over here. So like if you're that guitar's a Corker, which I would think of being as Irish and. That's a good thing. It's not a shiter. You know what I mean? Corker's a good thing. It's, oh, oh, oh. What do you think of the new song? Oh, it's a pure Corker, man. Uh, that's a good a good thing. So Corker, but not something you would put in the head of head. Guitar. Uh, I actually used my, my... I've actually got my... my, my actually I was doing some sanding over at Jen's to, to build this because I was kind of bribed to do it for fixing it out. But I've actually got a Mad Malco mask look. I got in Blitzkrieg. So there you go. So I was wearing this when I was doing... The thing was, it became so normal. It became to the point of... A wee bit like, say, if you're, if you're a boater, like I am. You're in the boat and you're like that. Something's wrong. What? What? What's wrong? I've not put my life jacket... You just Because I mean, you're not getting in a boat without a life jacket. Fuck that. I'm a really good swimmer. Are you? Oh, you, you can swim when you're unconscious, eh? Aye, no, in a boat, fucking life jacket, fuck off. There's no, there's no, there's no not even, right? Ibanez have the worst names. They do, oh, in some ways they do, but I mean, it kind of makes sense. I understand it, but it's more of a, it's not really a name. It's more of a model number, which I understand. I get that that's a RG470. I think it's just an RG470. It's, it's, yeah, but it should have a name. Which isn't our see road star is fine. That's a road star RG140. So you can have the name and then RG140. That's not a road star RG470. It's just an RG470. And you're like, but then you start arguing about you know, is SG because SG stands for solid guitar, which is really depressing when I found out that really. They just called it solid guitar. That's shite. I wish I didn't know that. And it's like the RG does mean Roadstar, Roadstar guitar, because that's that's the first year. 1986 was the first year of Roadstar guitars. Before that, they were just called Roadstars, which is, it's not a brilliant name, but it's all right. You know, and, and obviously it's not a case of one individual model, whereas that's where the, the Hawk and the Falcon and the Eagle work, because they're not the same. They're all the same model. They're all the same outline. The Hawks get, you know, it's, it's only, it doesn't have a fancy top. It's a three-piece neck. The Falcon, you start getting a fancy top and a five-piece neck and you get to the Eagle and it's got tons of binding on it. You know, but they're all basically the same model of guitar. I like that. Oh. Face shield is better for zombie management. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, so I, you know, I, I get the, the Ibanez thing, but it does kind of make sense as a model number, but it should have a name. It shouldn't be an RG. It should be an Eagle or a or Sp or something exciting. And then after the title of what it is, an RG 470, blah, 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 blah. I mean, at, at that point, I think, I'm, to be honest, I'm not even sure. I know that now, I think this is just an RG 470. Does it even say on it? It doesn't say on it. So this might have more letters in it. You know, because obviously you get the RG470, which is basically an Ibanez RG, but it doesn't have a scratch plate, whereas the 550 is that guitar. It's worth a lot more money, but it's got a scratch plate. So they have to dis distinguish between them, I suppose, and then you get ones that have the letters at the end, generally tell you what colour it is. So if it's a MH, 
I've got. A, I, I, I've given it back to Jen now. A three two one MH is three hundred pounds. Three hundred series, obviously, a higher up models better. An MH stands for mahogany. Nah, totally. Or it's like that uh, the one I've got on the way, which I'm not going to take off the wall in case I unplug the cameras. An RG five fifty, RG five thirty BP, and the BP stands for the black pearl finish, which kind of makes sense. But I get it. Ideally, you'd want to have a better name. It should still be a roadster. Yeah, protocol for the tarp. I'm sure that tarp got worn out during the lockdown because you could lock people up. Bottom master. <laughs> I have never heard that, Kenneth, but it makes sense that they would it would exist. And it also makes it sense that it doesn't it doesn't translate well from Japanese. I can. I mean, I, I, it makes sense. I, I, I 100% believe you that exists. It's kind of like baby metal, my favourite band of the last 20 years. Baby metal doesn't translate well. Baby means the birth. But you know, it's like if you in Japanese, if you translate the birth of a new, a new generation of or a, that kind of metal, it makes sense. Metal translates fine, but baby doesn't. Baby is like a sub-year-old child. Yeah, totally. But not... It means the birth of a new type of metal, which makes sense if you read it that way, but we don't see that. We just see baby metal and go, baby metal? Baby, for, for babies? It's a bad thing. Oh. <laughs> My passwords would be easy to guess. They've all got Strata telly in them. Where is it you live? What? What's your bank? Sort code? Aye. Oh, okay. I, 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 um, yeah. <laughs> Actually, my first ever email code was Montrose. I probably still got it. It was one of the things that I had to do when I was at uni. It's like, you need to make up, set up an email. And I set up an email on a fuck knows what. Was it Yahoo or something like that? And it was, your password is Montrose. Right. Okay. So, I don't, I, I fuck knows even know what name I put it under. Um, or the Brass Bassmaster, Maestro Effect Pedal. I think, to be honest, I think... A name can almost sell a guitar or a, an effects pedal. Tube Screamer. They're talking about, I've, I've, I've branched out the pedal. Tube Screamer is a good name for a pedal. The Rat is a good name for a pedal. Where's it I got? No, they're all shite names. There must be other ones that are good. You know, it's like, is that the, the tube? Bad Motor Scooter. <laughs> yeah. I ne honestly never heard that song, but I saw it. A couple of years ago on the Old Grey Whistle Test on YouTube, and it's fucking amazing. I love it. I love Bad Motor Scooter, yeah. Sammy Hagar. I'm pretty sure I've actually got a... I think I've actually got a live album. Is it him? Has he got a live album called Live and Clear? And, like, it's on clear vinyl. I was like, fucking hell. A clear vinyl record for a pound? I'm going to buy that just because it's clear. I think it might be red, clear, whatever. But, yeah. Big Muff. Yeah, Ruben. You're still here. Big Muff. Totally. Big Muff is hilarious. And it's even without any sort of Lady Garden connotations, Big Muff's still cool because it's like Muff or oh, Muffle. It's basically like putting a pillow in front of your amp, which it kind of is. Oh. Echoplex. We shaved. <laughs> like, Fifth for chaos, you're crazy. Yeah, totally. I get it. They've, 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 they obviously can't go that far. I actually did buy a, a micro metal muff. It was only a tenner from Cumbernauld, so it was only five minutes away. You know what I mean, it's like it's a micro metal muff, and I quite like. I thought that was all quite funny. Um, oh. I don't know about the web copycat as well, which is kind of like I think it was a kind of British version or a cheaper version of the Echoplex, and it was like it was a copycat because it's. You know, it's basically recorded what you played, then played it back. So it's copied it. So it's a fucking great name. And it also had a picture of a cat on it. And I managed to drop that. If a fire, I'm just going to keep, I'll look back there in a minute and see if a fire has started. Uh... Oh. 
Look at the club listings. These young bands all have shit names. Guess all the good names have been used already. They can't all have been used. I, I, there's, there's a few bands. I don't know. There's a lot of fucking tribute bands, and I fucking hate tribute bands, which is really shit because I'm in one after, called After the End. Playing, but it's Black Sabbath. I wouldn't play a tribute band for anything, any other band at all. Well, I'm saying that. I was in a sort of caravan tribute band. We did play a lot of caravan songs and caravan hair doesn't we knew them. We I still know them. Um but that we kind of did our own version of it. It wasn't a an a, a, a caravan or a kind of whimsical might be a word. I've got the that's a caravan poster. So they're on the wall. I fucking love them. In the Land of Green Pinks. If you've never heard the album in the Land of Green Pink, go for it. It's fucking amazing. If you don't like it within five seconds, then don't bother. But if you, the first five seconds of Caravan in the Land of Green Pink, if you go, ha, whoa, you'll fucking love all, all of it. But the first five seconds are, you might be completely appalled. A lot of people are. It's a 50, well, I don't know what the 50, 50 split is. Oh. I'm in a fire start. I was talking about the Miller run. Get the Yamaha. Which Yamaha? I've only got what what Yamaha has to have. Well, that one. But I suppose uh, I don't. He's, he's not commented, so I, I, I assume he's not on tonight. But um, ah, he won't care if I play it drunk. Oh Jesus, it weighs a lot. Actually, before I do this, I'm gonna go for a live weighing because my pal who owns that Yamaha I was around it earlier on. Is up here. Oh, that's really light. That's really good. I don't know how light. I don't know how much this weighs. I've never weighed it. I'm putting it at, it is quite light. So my thinking is a heavy guitar is over four kilograms or about four kilograms, which is what the corker is. That's your lighter edge of a Les Paul. Three and a half, three, three point six kilograms seems to be what an average strat weighs. Anything less than three and it's a pure featherweight. So I'm putting this at, I'm putting this at, mm, I'd say 3.5 is exact, 3.6 is exactly average. I'm going to go for this being slightly less. I'm going for 3.5. Put your bets in. You can do it amongst yourself. Oh, five kilograms equal Harley Benton. Depends which one, though. Eh? It's like some guitars are huge, though. You know, like, oh, I've got an Epiphone, th I've got a Thunderbird, and it's huge, and it's really heavy. Well, it's fucking massive. Of course it's heavy. Uh, Echoplex is the brand name because they made a delay and preamp pedal that took identical. Probably, I don't know. Aye. <laughs> but uh, aye, so how do, how do I reset this? Just T, there you go. Right. So I'm going for 3.5. Slightly less. 3.6 being completely average. I'm not even going to look at it myself. Oh my God, it's light. It's three kilograms. I know it says 3.03, .03, but it's got a strap on it and a lead plugged in, so it's going to be three. So yeah, there you go. So it's basically, it is a fucking light guitar. It's not mega light. I have had the the super lightweight Yamaha RGA AX I've got, which is made of carbon fiber and all that, and it's kind of built like a Malteser where it's got a hard exoskeleton. And then uh, I need to dig that guitar out again. That's a fucking amazing guitar. Um, <laughs> 3.2, well, three, no, three, basically, I'm, I'm arguing this is three kilograms, 3.0 something, and it's got a strap on it, it's three kilograms, so it is definitely on the light-hand side. Oh, fuck, fucking Americans, were you? Fucking shitey Imperial. Oh, got a button on it to change it to archaic modes. Pounds, what did you say? Six and a half pounds. I, 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 I'm now aware that I did actually say I was going to pick up that Yamaha, which I haven't done yet. 6.72. Yeah, six point six and a half pounds is what this weighs. I just don't know pounds. It seems, it's a silly thing to learn. I was trying to explain this to um, the girl we were staying with in America, her son. Was it up here? Yeah, why do, why do people use... Inches and feet and pounds and all that was like that because they're stupid. Because like, oh, how do you mean is that? Individual people are clever. 
But when you put them on mass, they become stupid. I was like, all right, was that So yeah, my argument for, I mean, okay, I use miles because you're just used to it, which is fucking wrong. Um, but uh, like, see a ten centimeter by ten centimeter cube. That's a liter. See a liter of water in that ten centimeter cube is a kilogram. That's so sensible. Oh my god! And oh, well, like, like, oh, at what point does water freeze? Zero. At what point does it boil? One hundred. Oh, it's so sensible. And then you start looking at metric shit, and you're like, oh yeah. So what? What does it? What does water freeze at? 30, minus 32, 32. I was like, what's boiling point? Uh, I don't even know. And then it's like, uh, how about pounds? Oh, that's seven pounds, three quarters and a sixteenth and an eighth and a third. And you're like, oh, fuck off. You know what I mean, just use, this is it's quite different from that last guitar. Have I turned it on? I have, but I've not plugged it in. The reason I've not plugged it in is, where do you think the jack socket is? Let's have a go. Where, where do you think the jack socket is? Um, I'm getting caught up. What is it? Maybe some well, KG is good for tone wood. <laughs> M A Mark Cram 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 Cram, whatever it is. I well, weighs more than my I'm a Canadian and laughing myself over here. I do you, do you not use pounds? I don't know. Fucking but we don't use kilometers here. Kilometers is a much more sensible thing, but we know miles. In the 70s thought it's imperial and metric saying metric would take over the world never happened in the USA. It just makes so much more sense. Although my pal Mo is into building tables and shit, woodwork. And there is a thing where it makes more sense if you're trying to divide something up. If you're trying to divide something in four because the met, the imperial system's kind of in twelves. So in a twelve, in a, if you if we have a base twelve, you've got a third, which is four, and a quarter, which is three, which you don't get with if you base it in tens. So like, what's a third? Oh, it's thirty three point three 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 three. You know, it's not as it's not as easy to divide. 10 centimetres into a third as it is to divide whatever the fucking inches because it divides div that a bit of I mean, fuck it. Uh, yeah, it is a cool looking. I mean, look at it. This is a, a high end one. This is a AES 8 8 series one. And the price of this makes you sick considering what kind of guitar it is you're getting. You're getting an 8 series Yamaha. That's 8 as in 800 plus pounds. Um, Look at it's like pure look at the look at the chinners. What's going on there? And it's like, but it's got a, it's like a Les Paul headstock, but it's got a straight ahead string pull. Look at how close the fucking those to mental in it. The way they did that is like basically these tuners here, these are locking spersals, have like a longer shaft bit, short shaft, medium length, length, length shaft, long shaft. What a good idea that is. Uh, but where do you think the guitar, where do you think the lead goes in? Oh. It does make sense for a joiner a little bit, yeah. We're taught millimetres and centimetres, and yeah, kilometres. We're not taught kilometres, we're miles, but it just mean. But look, so what we have here on the back is basically a Telecaster plate with a Stratocaster jack socket built into it. Because my, my pal's like, I, 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 obviously I was going over earlier on, I was like, oh, I'm going to bring my guitar over and show you. He was, like, and he was, he was wanting to show me this and said it's the weirdest guitar ever. And it's kind of like a wee bit like that Yamaha a RGX A2 I've got. It's totally mental, but see, to play it, it's just a really good guitar. It's To play it, it's nothing fancy. Don't even bother tuning it. Like he was even saying, this, it's kind of mad the way it's like. See, because it's got this slope on it, he always gets three different shades of blue, which I get. Kind of like a Les Paul. These are mad uh, individual string blocks. See that they're wearing like metal blocks sitting there. And then you get your cinematic. It's got Demarzio pickups. It's got a crazy tone. The tone control's notched. So you've got a. Uh... <laughs> Oh, when you go up, it goes louder. Yeah. 
So it kind of goes the wrong way. I don't. I, I've not had a look inside this yet. I've never even played this. I've just. I was talking to my pal and it was like, I had it. I had it on the strap and it was like, I don't agree. This is weird at all. It's totally natural and dead easy to play and doesn't feel mad. But it's kind of like that. I, I've been the uh, Yamaha RGX A2. I've got. It's like up here. Oh, it's you know, it's, it's all these mad things on it, and you play it, and it's just like it's just a really good guitar. Yes, it's a really good guitar, and it's got special features. But um, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of, I mean, I'm not a hundred percent sold on the shape as it sits. So that's it kind of looks bulbous and fat. It looks like a fat wee bastard, but it's really it's it's not. It's quite it's relatively light. I mean. I suppose I think it might does it even have no it doesn't have the Les Paul angle. It, it sits perfectly. Rat so it's got some weird that the volume control for the neck it is so that no what I'm investigation involved because if I if I've got both the volumes at nothing, nothing, right? Let's see if I turn up the, the, the bridge volume. That is up. Okay, it's the neck volume. But if I turn the neck volume up, turn the bridge volume down, it turns it off. There's some, there's some crazy shit going on. Yeah, I mean... Honestly, if you're looking at Yamaha guitars, you know what you're going to get. And the number, the first number implies how fucking amazing it is. A Yamaha 012, the cheapest one, which is the, the numbers kind of work. So 012 is zero series, lowest you can get, one humbucker, uh, one humbucker and two single coils, 012. The 112 is a bit more expensive, so better tuners. One one two, one series, one humbucker, two single coils. A three two one is higher up again because it's a three series. These are about three hundred quid. Two one, two humbuckers, one single coil. It's an HSH. This is an eight two zero, oh, so eight hundred pounds plus two humbuckers and no single coils. Um, but I mean Yamahas are amazing. I do get. The problem with Yamaha's is the recent. It's also got two. Uh, it's got two buttons on the back. But Yamaha's are just fucking amazing. Um, Carved top. Um, I'd probably go for contoured top rather than carved top. Because carved and plat. I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, it, it does make sense. I mean. Uh, if I was saying is up here, it's mad at night though when it's got shadows on it because because it's got the three surfaces, it's very much got this surface, the flat surface, and this surface. You always end up with three different colors, which I kind of get. You know what I mean? It's like because it's like a sort of some sort of mad translucent um thing. Me, I'll be doing a proper video on this. I've not set it up. Basically, I brought it back about half six or something. Had my dinner and it's been sitting on the wall ever since. It is weird that no, it's not. What the fuck? The... That volume's at full, right? So if I turn that down, what the fuck is that knob do? I thought it was neck pickup. Bridge pick up a clicky tone control, but no. Because don't what the fuck is that one doing? Do? 
Yamaha or Mento. So that the the the. What? So the neck pickup is this volume control, yeah? No. Yeah, the neck pickup is this one. No, I can't. No, no. I think I'm just drunk. It's not making much sense to me. Neck bridge. But if you've got the, if you've got the, yeah, I, I'm gonna, the, yeah, I'm gonna put this away because it's doing my head in because I don't understand what's going on. It'll make sense to me when I'm sober. Mad backplate at the back. I love that. See that? Um, it's kind of like a wee bit of the Ibanez. Uh, actually, my pal's got the same guy's got the Talman where you've got like a a Telecaster plate with an output on it. That's what I would like on my new guitar. That'd be pretty cool having like a Stratocaster plate. Like this, but with a volume and a tone. That well, you need a switch as well. Ah, it's all thought about. You know, I'm, I'm too drunk to understand what this is doing. It's not doing within the realms of what I understand. So I'll go for another handmade custom bastard. Oh God, it's heavy. The corker that is. So basically four kilograms. So one three kilograms times one and I uh, yeah. Three kilograms versus four kilograms. But this is a... Oh, it's nice on this back one. I love it. I've never played a bad Yamaha. No. It's like, I bought a Yamaha acoustic. I think I mentioned this earlier on before you joined. Um, like a, a classical thing. And I was like, yeah. You got a car boot sale... There's lots of shitty classical sheepy guitars. I was like, I'm actually went for that. I'm like a tenor. And I was like, it's a Yamaha. In my head, I went, it's a Yamaha. And I looked at it. I was like, oh, I'm a tenor. Eh? They went, ah, it's a Yamaha. <laughs> and it was fucking, it's brilliant. It's like, you don't, it's, it's not, obviously, it's not at the level of supreme. It's like, you don't get shit Yamahas. Oh. New Pacifica Pro 3 7 are going up market, I guess. They always wear up market, Pontiac. Uh, Yamaha's have always done proper top of the line thousands of pounds guitars. They've always done them. You just look at the number in the back, and it was a a one or a three or a five or an eight. Seems to remember it's like a one's about a hundred and something. So the when you get to three, it's three hundred and something. When you get to five, it's five hundred odds, and then eight's about an eight hundred odds, a wee bit more than that. You know that kind of thing. So the ones you're looking at, the Pacifica Pros, will be fifteen. 2000, you know, a 2000 or something. You know, I mean, it kind of it kind of goes in it, but I mean, they will be the best guitars. I mean, I've played a couple of 600 series uh, Yamaha Pacificas, and there is they're as good as you can get with a guitar. As a 600 series, once you get up to 900 or 1000, they're Japanese, so I can't even imagine. I'd imagine if you've got a Japanese Yamaha Pacifica, you're up there fighting with the best guitars you can buy in the world, no doubt. There's not much they can hang me. Uh, 3,700. Uh, one of my top, if not the best, acoustics, a 10-year-old Yamaha with old locker before it was forbidden by Save the Planet rules. Hope the planet is safe now. Old lacquer, all right. I, uh, I like watching the movie. Yeah, monkey with a Rubik's Cube. I'm, 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 I'm kind of quite like an intelligent monkey who's used to other, other things. So I should know. I mean, of all the people I know that could work out what the fucking electrics and a guitar are doing, I don't know everyone, I'll give it that, but I know more than anyone else about how guitars are wired because my brain's fucked up and weird. Things occur to me that don't occur to other people. Um, Yamaha, I can't imagine. Oh, no, of course, they, no, Yamaha. They don't have the best look, Yamaha's, uh, but I mean... This has got the thinnest neck ever after playing those two.
I need to get my band started up. It's it's on. It's on go. Uh, my band is, is, is going to start. Uh, MIA, it's called because it's Malcolm, Ivor and Alan. I'm going to do it. We're going to go into the studio and I'm going to... It's it, it's going to be a deep purple type experience. Or it might be shite and you'll never hear about it. Going to do it though. Going to totally do it. I have to do it because I've got fucking custom guitars I've got to play. I've got to hear this in the studio. Because, I mean, are you, that's when you really, really notice the difference between like a really good guitar and a fucking amazing guitar. I remember taking my Schecter Telecaster into the studio just when I was jamming with my pals and as soon as you stuck it through a fucking, what was the soft tech through a former 12 at Vorm volume, it's like, whoa! You do kind of, I mean, I'm sitting in here, okay, I'm playing through the expensive amp and all, but it's not up very loud, so you get away with your squires and epiphones, they're kind of, oh, yeah, but when you actually play through a big amp, it's different. Uh... Catch you later, Mr. White Snake. A nice lullaby. Yeah, I'm at RG three fifteen. I well, when Yamaha boat engines, I could never afford one, so I don't have one because Yamahas were always one and a half times the price of anything else. But that's because they were better. Um, bless you all. Yeah, Mr. West, to be honest, it's five to eleven. I'm going to give up anyway because I'm nearly finished my bucky, and I don't want to be pure fucked all day tomorrow. No, I don't want to play this. I want my um I want my new guitar because I don't I don't ever want to put this up against anything. Because it's not fair. This is you know, this 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 is a fucking unbelievably well made normal guitar, which I love. That's that that's just something else. It's a different it's a different league when you get to the level of fanciness that to the point of What's the point in that? And it's like, because it looks cool, it's got that in it, but it's also amazing. We didn't sacrifice. This is really light. Light is a thing. But I must have turned, the, must have turned something off. I didn't turn the apple. Snowy? Is it still snowy in Stockholm? Fucking hell! Wow. Anyhow, I don't think I, I think maybe my my Sunday nights are probably a better night for streaming. But I mean, people will watch it tomorrow. You can just watch it tomorrow night. Like fuck it. It's like, uh, basically, hi. Uh, anyhow, I love you all. And seeing as it's eleven o'clock, I'm going to stop drinking that bucky because I'm only. I'm at to be honest, I've nearly finished it. Fuck it. Um, it's annoying. Um, so, love you all. Give me any shouts for anything you want me to do next week or anything like that. I'm going to try and start, but if you don't follow me on Facebook, Mad Malco Guitars, give it a look because I, I basically stopped posting shite on that page completely. It's stupid. I should be fucking posting things. It's like, as well, you know what I mean? It's only going to help. I just, it's like for the five minutes it takes, oh, God, we're doing that. Fuck it, I'll just do it. Nothing to do tomorrow, staying up and playing backing tracks. It's different for everyone. I can't play along with backing tracks. I don't know, there's something about it. I'll, give me a loop pedal. I can play two hours along with a one chord jam. Actually, I did a jam. I'll do, I'll do the same jam again to end. I believe it was A it was called.
Ah, hey, Flory. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm, we're, we've just given up. Everyone's going to bed. Um, there you've got seen the, the cracking. There you go. There's a guitar for you. Only one in the world. None of pish. Like flame. Doesn't really show up in the camera as well as it should. But my God, is this thing a 3D PRS fest when you look at the, the flame on it? I see. Don't know if I could get the angle. You can't. You can't really. It doesn't look. It looks shite on the fucking thing. Oh, I think. I think the Kraken's a sexy beast, but it's. It's like, I think one of the problems I had with these guitars is um, obviously you've seen this kind of shape before with the J Pax ones. They were already painted. See, because it's a mad mental shape. I think you've got to be used to the shape of it first it's, 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 it's alarming how similar to the where is it the shocking bird it is though isn't it that was kind of intentional that's why i chose the telly bridge and that but um and the trump orange but uh it's totally grown on me it's gone from being one that's oh, really that shape once it now i'm used to it. but i think see when it gets muddled up with you know the jpaxy type things it loses the, the effect of the shape, um, you know, the shape is part of this guitar. There must be some way of doing it because I mean, obviously, something like you're used to looking an RG, you know, what an RG looks like. So, putting a mad pattern on it gives it character or a P base. That, but yeah, it's a P base, totally. So, it's like your, your brain says to P base, now let's look at what's on it. Whereas, this is like when it's, when it's patterned up, it's like, pure, ah, ah, ah. Oh, oh, just to my you know I mean, it's kind of a wee bit too much. The curve thing when your eyes aren't being drawn to it. Yeah, exactly that. Yes, there's something. There is a way of j in it, but I don't know exactly what it is. But then again, I think my time, my view on it will change. Now that, I mean, I've gone from the point of, and I mean the ergonomics of the shape are unbelievable, especially the one Jen's got, which I'd, I'd never really thought. Uh, it's got boob cuts in it, so if you've got boobs, which I've kind of got boobs, but I mean, you know, if you're a woman and I've got proper boobs, not just what I've got, it, it kind of it's that, that's what that, this bit kind of fits. This is a different shape. Uh, this is a this is a man's guitar, but uh, amazing. No time to go to church on Sunday. I think they did not, did not burn all the churches. Some amazing looking churches. I see the black, you know, you're talking about Norway now, but uh, some of the churches that the black metal folk burnt down, what stunningly beautiful buildings they were. I mean, yes, totally. Fuck Christians and their thing. But I mean, yeah, totally. The, the, the actual architecture, they were stunning, amazing looking and creepy looking buildings. Um, your monthly greyhound walk. I'm, 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 yeah, okay. That's, uh, yeah, we've all got monthly greyhound walks. Uh, can you see? I, can't, I, I should. I don't know. She's going to get a boobs up. Yeah, I mean, it's like what? Well, I'm. I need, I need to go to bed. <laughs> so, same things like that. Obviously, means I've had too much to drink and I need to go to bed myself. It's like, it's like basically, as soon as a girl says, "I have my monthly," ah, no, not interested. No, no. It's like that's fine. No, totally do whatever you want. It's all you want. It's like your monthly thing. Yeah, it's like, oh, no, la, 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 la. Yeah. <laughs> Rock on. I love you all. Catch you later. Uh, and I keep saying that before I've fucking put this thing back on again. Uh, the Greyhounds, we'll have a 70 Greyhounds Air Beach. That sounds fucking amazing. I was on, I was on Air Beach not that long ago, actually. It's not nice. That's a lot. I take it you can definitely find your own one. I'm sure. Are you basically rec uh, trying to work out, making making sure that your dog knows you? I know you probably reckon, but if you're talking about 70, I can't imagine there's 70 greyhounds 
that all look significantly different from each other. You know what I mean? They're all in the lead. Oh, you want them to watch it? Be just battering up and down at 100 mile an hour. Anyhow, well, sorry about me, but I know the Saturday night thing's not ideal. Next week it'll be Sunday. It's just I've got something to do tomorrow. Come on, Blazing Saturdays. I went, I, I'm going to have to learn it again. I can't. Have I turned off the amp? I have. Have I got clean? I do. I'll be shite at it. I can't remember the chords. Never goes through. When outlaws rule the West and fear gripped the land, a man called went out for a man with guts to take the West in hand. They needed a man who was brave and true with justice for all as they say. Out of the sun rode a man with a gun, and Bart was his name. Yes, Bob, Bob. I can't remember it. He rode, rode. I'll, I'll work it out, right? I'll do a video of it later on. Rock on. I love you all, especially all of you. You're all fucking great. Love it. Love it. Catch you later. And then I've got to press the button again. Love you all.